And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two of my good brothers here in the temple, making his making his debut here in the watch, the Dark Knight of the of the Temple, better known as Good Brother Einbrecht, and the Man of a Thousand Runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises. And the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. Mm-hmm. Good day. It is February 20th, 2022. That's a whole lot of twos. I should I probably should have made that joke if we were recording on 2 22 but oh well. New 22-22, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Literally, Tuesday. Yep. But I do apologize in advance for the fact that there was no Geek Watch last week. Um, it was more of, an, more of an issue of this being a, this being a thing that gets some of the other people um, a bit a bit panicky, and um, Zan, and Zan was down that week. Monk missed me too much. Ah. Uh-huh. But his aim's getting better though. Keep the, keep this up, keep this up, and I might start, I might start up, I might start upgrading the phosphorus. <laughs> Ooh, pretty lights. But for this this particular episode is going to be one of our building the equations episodes. For those un, for those unaware, because we've only done two, we've only done two of them so far, I'd say. Building the equation is where we t- is where we take a look at a a motif that we that we see in storytelling and enthusiast storytelling especially that a lot of people consider cliche or overdone and do our own spin on the concept. The last time we did this was the Secret Guardians thing, which took a look at the motif that's seen in a lot of shonen and seinen anime of a Order, of an order of of hero likes that um, are focused on defending people from the, from the shadows from some sort of specific monster. Um, Bleach, Demon Slayer, that that kind of thing fits into, and Jujutsu Kaisen fits into that kind of motif. Mm. Jujutsu Kaisen, good stuff. People should watch it. Yeah. Now. For this particular one, originally, this idea that the idea that we're going to be exploring started out as whether or not I would reconstruct High Guardian Spice after doing the monastic therapy episode of it with um, Doku, because against my against my wishes and against my better judgment, he ended up mar- he ended up marathoning the whole season, mm-hmm. or at least as much of it as he could stomach. No, he went through the whole thing. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Hmm, that poor, I poor to... man. I actually just finished watching Reacher, but that's a very different show. Yes, it is. Probably actually good too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, he had some narrative issues, but I enjoyed it. But uh, obviously, the re- obviously we are not doing a reconstruction of High Guardian Spice anytime soon or ever. And the large reason for that is, as I've mentioned in the past, we are particular when it comes to what qualifies for a reconstruction and what doesn't. And mm-hmm. since you, Zan, if you don't mind channeling the evangelist for a moment, I'd like you to recap so that, I, especially since we haven't, especially since we have a newcomer here, what qualifies and disqualifies a reconstruction. All right, so we reconstruct shows, books, video games, anything like that, any sort of media, when it hasn't reached its full potential, and there are ways that we can help that along, primarily. There are missed opportunities, balls dropped, things that, if they had just tugged on this thread here or that thread there a little more, may have actually made for a higher quality piece of entertainment. Uh, When we did our reconstruction of the Star Wars sequel trilogy, we 
started by pulling on a few threads they could have pulled on near the beginning, which caused a snowball effect throughout the entire trilogy. And that's really what's gone with every reconstruction we've done since. We look at missed opportunities near the foundation, things that cause the rest of the buildup to somehow fail in one way or another, and we try to follow, if not a thread that's already there, a thread that makes sense to put there and see what comes of it. High Guardian Spice has way too many things wrong with it, even all the way down in the bedrock underneath its foundation, that you'd be better served completely deconstructing the whole thing and starting from zero, which is the reason why we will never reconstruct High Guardian Spice. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are certain works that are not bad enough to warrant a reconstruction, and there are some that are too bad. And we, tr we try to find a middle ground, which is why High Guardian Spice will not get the reconstruction treatment. Now, if somebody wants to redesign the characters, that's, cer that's certainly their prerogative, but it's not ours. However, I ended up thinking a bit more on the, on the concept of a, of a school for adventurers slash heroes, which we, have, which we have seen plenty of times in video games and, an and anime. Um, in the video game ex in the video game case, a few examples would be um, the three gardens in Final Fantasy VIII, the monastery it, the monastery where Part One takes where a lot of Part One um, takes place in in Fire Emblem Three Houses, and the academia in Final Fantasy Type Zero. Just to na just to name a few, there's plenty of others that could be brought up. Including one, including one indie game I remember that was all about that concept. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, even though I pick on it a lot, Harry Potter is an, is another example of this. My Hero Academia, what with what with the different um, hero schools, is an, is yet another example of this. Hero class A and B, support class, marketing class, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That and the uh, and the non UA classes. True. The other, the other, uh, the other universities. UA just being the quote-unquote pinnacle. Yeah. And the and uh, at and putting all that together, I thought, as well as the fact that the Strixhaven module that was supposed to be about a magic university ended up disappointing me, like a lot of first-party Wizards of the Coast stuff these days. Mm -hmm. The idea was planted in my head to do our own take on it. And thus, with that lengthy preamble, we arrive at the at the topic for tonight: building the equation, Adventurers Academy. And obviously, the calling it Adventurers Academy would be the nickname for the place, not the official name. Mm -hmm. uh, we can get to we can get to an official name a little bit down the road, but. The other thing that certainly that certainly helped me put this idea together was the was a um, project from Steamforged Games called Adventures in Academia First Class, mm -hmm. which was was a set was a set of miniatures and a and and and, adve and a adventure along with a few other things, which divided which which um. Divided itself into four how into four Hogwarts style houses. The House of the House of Arcane, the House of Divine, the House of Might, and the House of Skill. And putting those things together, that kind that kind of gave me a bit of an idea on how on how we do on how we do this. But I think before we before we nail down the nitty gritty of the place. One thing that we should establish is a bit is the origin story of AA. And I think I talked with you a bit a bit on this the other the other night Zan where I, where I said that the idea is people are going to always go people are going to always go out adventuring in in this in this hypothetical fantasy world that this takes place in. Mhm. Mm the problem And you problem, met Go ahead. 
and the way you the way you phrased it is the same way <clears throat> Terry Pratchett phrases about organized crime in the Discworld series. It, there's always going to be crime and criminals, so it might as well be organized. Um, in the same fashion, in worlds where an adventurer's academy or guild or whatever would pop up, there's always going to be people trying to adventure. They're going to do it in sloppy, messy ways. They're going to fail a lot. So it's better to mitigate that as much as possible by creating an academy to teach them where they won't die and suck so much. Mm -hmm. Now... I know a lot. I know a lot of the works that have tackled this kind of thing present it present this sort of this sort of institution as akin to a high school. We're up. We're upping that up to a university for a couple of reasons. One, it lets us get away with more stuff, and two, the average age that peop that people's level one characters start out at in mo in most games is in their early twenties. So the co the combination of those two things is the reason why we went with a more university like structure. Yeah. Um. Now, get the getting to the origin of it. I th I think the I think the idea of four people or four organizations coming together to build this thing would certainly would certainly work. One re one representing each house. Um. Mm -hmm. So I think I think the first thing we'd have to come up with is the is the name the name for these for, for these four guilds essentially that would that would be that would lay the foundation because calling it the Marshal, the Skilled, the Divine, and the Arcane doesn't ha doesn't have doesn't have the right impact. I think a better idea is that this is an adventuring party that realized they all had something to offer. Two fellow adventurers. They'd been veterans for a long time. Saved a lot of people. Done a lot of good shit. They're close to each other. They're good friends. And they wanted to make sure that there were people who could pick up, pick up where they left off when they eventually and inevitably die. Mm -hmm. I think I think those four. I think those four we can we can refer to as the paragons. Yeah. Now, the, ne the I think it, I think with establishing that we it could be easy to say that one, one was a mage, one was a cleric, one was a fighter, one was a, one was a thief. But I think we I think we need to expect to expand that concept a bit further. Um, I can see I can see one of the, I can see four the, I can see um. I can see a few of them being not too far removed from the icons in Thirteenth Age, especially especially whoever founds the Marshall House, not the Marshall mm. House, the um, Arcane House. Mm. That's not too far removed from the Archmage icon in Thirteenth Age. Yeah, and I'm pretty I'm pretty sure the Archmage would probably be the. Instead of coming up with the names with the the names for them, I think we I think what would be important is coming up with the title. The archmage yeah. definitely represents the um the um arca the arcane end of things. Um, for the divine, what do you guys think about the hierophant? I think it's a good starting place. To be honest, hierophant is a. Uh, it's I... hierophants tend to be leaders and political members of the divine cast in most cases like they're they're your popes and your and your major leaders of churches mm -hmm. in an adventuring party i don't think you'd have a hierophant i think you'd have a particularly devout follower of some sort of especially if you're at maximum level of whatever system we might use um you you have an extremely devout and beloved child of a god or goddess so um i i was thinking more something along the lines of um i don't know the 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 chosen perhaps that i think would be That's, a bit overkill 
That'd be yeah, a little overkill enough. and and a little too vague, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, the Exalted. And hear me out, Monk, this is not a reference to Exalted, even though they're all demigods. Actually, no, there you go. There's your connection. They're all... F She's, she or he was probably some sort of near demigod. The Exalted. She's touched by divinity. Or he. I don't know why I have a stuck in my head that it's a woman. Uh, I'm I'm just I'm just going to put in the exalt. Yeah. Um. Or the. Or, there's a, there, hold on. Let me look up one other word. That it still sounds similar. <sighs> I had um, thought of Avatar for a second, but I, <sighs> I shot that dead as as soon as it entered my head. mm Hmm. No, this is the no. That's that's not the word I want to use. I am pretty sure, but exalt or exalted is the best one there. Oh, either that or 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 um. I had thought of oracle, but that but that has its own connotations that wouldn't fit as well. Hold on. Uh, I I I might have a better better word. <laughs> what about the Excelsis or the Excelsior? I'll go with Excelsis so that people don't make the dumb joke that they're thinking. I know. Excelsis me literally means ah, uh, like if you look at Latin, it's elevated, mm -hmm. something that's brought up. So brought up to a divine level, Excelsis. I don't know. It was, it was just, and again, I don't know why my mind is stuck on a divine person being female, but whatever. I what I don't I don't dis I don't disagree. The when it comes to when it comes to the martial when it comes to the martial house, um, that's obvious. That's obviously akin to our our um, warrior class in the FF Legend project. Um, yeah, but something something. Something just called the warrior would be a little uh, lackluster compared to his buddies, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, I'm trying. The, the my mind keeps going to some variation of sword saint. I knew you were going with some variation of sword saint. <laughs> Whereas well, my sword saint were two great classes. I <laughs> I love that shit. That was such a cool book. Needed to be fine tuned so it wasn't so OP, but great ideas. But uh my my other my other uh my other inflection was a variation on bladed soul. The soul edge? <laughs> no. We can't, no. We we can't have do you really I want don't... to name it after a soul de after a soul devouring nightmare of a weapon? Yes. Yes, who turns the uh, host into a literal nightmare? Yes. Mm. Siegfried and Nightmare are best characters, and no one can can convince me otherwise. I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> I'm saying that this is the old meme of he's out of line, but he's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, let me. I would think that he'd be probably the tank of his party, actually, Monk. He's the only frontline fighter we have. What about the Praetorian? Something like the Resolute might also work. I think the I I think that I think that that, that um the person who founded the Marshall House would be would be the embodiment of the phrase "one warrior worth a thousand. The kind, oh, of, the, the kind of person who, who if who, if you saw him fighting, it would be it would be like looking at a fight in a Dynasty Warriors game. Joel <laughs> could you always call it something along the lines of the School of the First Blade. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I I had something there. Yeah, but I don't. I wouldn't want this. The reason why I didn't go with Sword Saint is because I didn't want it to be associated with just just swords. 
Yeah. Um. Um. Uh, <sighs> we want to associate him with being good with basically every weapon and being able to, again, slay all. <clears throat> um. Hmm. I mean, something along the lines of uh, School of the Deft Hand. If you're talking about martial prowess specifically. This is martial prowess with uh, every... Uh... I'm not sure what's a good word for this. Um, I mean, we could go a little literal and call him the Armory. No. Um. Or if we... If we really wanted to make a reference to, to people who were masters of all weapons and the top of their game, we could go with the Persian army and call him the Immortal. If we call him the if we call him the Immortal, then people are get then people are gonna start making um are going to start making Um Highlander jokes. But is that a bad thing? Um... What about the Varangian? What, like the Varangian guard? Yeah. Which served, served as bodyguards to, to Byzantine emperors. Yep. I can I can go I can go with that because the <laughs> even though there's no way we could have used it for some reason I end up thinking of the Yom's Viking. Yeah. But I'm trying to recall what ver what um Varangi what the term Varangian meant. Um It was the name that the Romans gave to Vikings and Swedes. Specifically that they gave to Greek Vikings mostly Swedes. Yeah. So the <clears throat> it breaks down from sworn companion confederate or a foreigner who has taken service with the new lord by treaty of fealty. Like, it, it literally compounds from pledge of uh, and companion, or yeah. faith in companion. Um, so. and then the, la the, last f the last founder that we have is that, is that of the Skilled House. So, and I should, I should note th that things like, things like rogues, rangers, and bards count under that, and we'll probably expand the class list for each of these houses in a moment. My vote is still the Shrine of the Silver Monkey. Your vote... <laughs> <laughs> your vote ha your vote has been do has been acknowledged and ignored. Okay, Galvatron. Duly noted and ignored. Um. Uh, for someone who is deft at all of these skill based, less combaty, more more lifey things. This might be a bit obvious, but I'm thinking the Arsene. The others are, haven't really been names, though, Monk. The others have been titles. Arsene is a name being used as a title in that respect. In which case, we go the other way. The Joker. Now everybody's going to make Batman jokes. 
Ha! Either Batman or... Don't... Um... If instead instead of the instead of the the wild card, yeah. Now everybody's going to be making different jokes, but they are going to be better. Yeah. And so the archmage, the exult, the Varangian, and not the exult, the Excelsis. Oh yes, the Excelsis. I I know we changed it. I just forget exactly where we changed it to. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Archmage, the Excelsis, the Varangian, and the Wildcard forged their new home. Mm -hmm. um, now, with... And I'd, I'd imagine that within that, bec because of the fact that you have these pe these pe these four... In the, this four par this four-person party that is con that is considered legend even among legends, that... Um, they were able to get they were able to get a lot of help from the from various guilds to put to put together this academy. Of course, they'd been all around the world. They'd been they'd saved small everything from small villages to whole countries. Mm -hmm. They'd done everything, seen everybody, made friends and connections everywhere. Some yeah. more friends than connections, others more connections than friends. High wild card. If I ha if I have to use the if I have to use the level approach, all of the by the time they start th by the time they start this endeavor, all of them would be level thirty. If I have to use D and D's leveling system, we have to use D and D's leveling system. Yes, I'm just saying if we're not des we're designing this to be some to be somewhat to be somewhat agnostic. Yeah. Oh. I'll certainly make some make some notes to the to the class system in a minute, but it's not like you couldn't run this in any other in any other um fa any other fantasy game. Mm -hmm. uh, now gran granted granted some of them you might have a bit you might have a bit of trouble with. Um, like I wouldn't run I wouldn't run this in in say, um, in say Conan. <laughs> But in ge but I th I think before we continue on, um, I think I think establishing a n a name for the for the place would be would be important, and I do th I do think we should have the letter A be be pre be present in some form. Okay. Hmm. Um. I had th I had thought about going with, um, with uh, with Agito at Acad Academia. But why Agito? Well, you know what Agito means, right? Depends on which Agito we're talking about. Um. I I believe in Lat I believe in Latin. It is to set in motion. I think that's true. The only reason I ask is because we also have a lot of Japanese that we talk about, Monk. Mm -hmm. But yes, it does. It does mean things along the lines of put in motion, to urge on, to move, or to drive, or as it is the stem for the word, agitate. But I think academia or academy is a little too rote. Mm -hmm. Agito apparently means then act in Latin. Yes. But uh, let me check some other. some other possibilities. As, mm. Again, as long as as long as it starts with an A. I feel that should be important.
I mean, we could call it the Agito Arcanum. Because an Arcanum can be a specialized knowledge or detail that is mysterious to the average person. Or a secret or mystery. They're I... teaching the secrets of, of how to move as an adventurer, so... Um, I can, I can certainly go with that. So, Ag Agito Arcanum is, is the place, and, um, for what, for what it's worth, I do, in, I envision, the way I envision it is, is a very, is a very, this is a very large school. I'd say, I'd say probably, I'd say probably houses, I'd say what, um, 50,000 people total. Mm -hmm. Not just not just students, but st but staff and everything in between. I'm not sure. And more more importantly, it is this is not this this Agito Arcanum, um, because of the reputation of the Paragons. I view this as having the same relationship that a town has that that ha that has a co that has a college within it. Well, and because it is a place that teaches adventurers, it's likely to more be, it's like to, likely to be much more like a castle town. Mm -hmm. um, it, yes, this is a place that teaches people, but first of all, it's going to screen the people it teaches. They're not just going to teach every every Tom, Dick, and Harry down the street. Um, second of all, they they are going to need the town if they're going to be self sufficient. They're going to need their own farms. They're going to need you know, a way for commerce to come through. They're, and they are going to become a somewhat centralized point because of that. Mm. It's likely even going to spawn satellite schools, depending on how long it, how long it's been out. Um, um, <clears throat> I could see, I could see, I could see satellite schools at, um, in the in the area because we're going with the idea that this is a place that's that's been around for quite a while and has a, and has a fair amount of prestige. Yeah, and so the satellite schools are basically like. Uh, preparatory schools for the actual arcanum mm -hmm. um and then the the biggest thing is because it is teaching people to fight and people to adventure and to be good at it it's going to rack up opponents it's going to happen whether that's people that just want to break it down because they want to take over the world or whether that's opposing schools mm -hmm. which always happens eventually um, you could also uh, end up with shit like uh, Assassin's Guilds and things like that. Yeah. Because you usually be... run into opposition when you're trying to create any sort of foundation for society. Um, one thing... One... I'd, I'd say... I'd say that... Th that, um... The place around it is... Is a bit... Is a bit of its own... A bit of its own fiefdom. That is... In, that is an indep that is independent. Yeah, I'm. I'm saying that this place is probably in and of itself its own nation state. It's 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 like the city states of old. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's going to like the central the central piece is going to be the large castle that that these uh, four uh, probably purchased from a kingdom on the cheap because they saved it so many times or whatever. Um, and the parcel of land that was given with it, which was acres and acres of untamed land, because like, well, we don't really need this castle. It's in the middle of nowhere, and you know, you guys can just have all that and teach people how to use fireball and stuff because that's way away from any of our cities, so nobody will be bugged. Mm -hmm. And so they they already they likely already had a castle, um, and they probably built on it, and you know, magically enhanced it and made sure it had all its own wards and stuff, so that they could teach magic within the grounds. But yeah. as a castle town, it's going to, it's likely going to be one of the larger types of castle towns since it's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. It's going to have that big castle in the middle, that, that centerpiece. And then it's going to have your varying rings of walls with different levels of societal um, entries within it, whether that be residential or industry or otherwise. And then outside the walls, you're going to have your farmland, you're going to have your normal villages... But it's going to be a place that's probably got a higher than than normal um, quality of life, just because they're near where all the adventurers are. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a pretty happy place. Yeah. And 
because so many adventurers will likely settle down there, many of the villagers, while not being formal adventurers, will probably still have a little bit of training just from their parents. Mm -hmm. And so really colonial America. <laughs> yeah. Incident incidentally, I did I did a bit of dig I did a bit of digging around on um on Google Image Search to see if I to see if I could find something that would be close to our idea. Um, mm -hmm. I came across this, which I'll put in the I'll put in the um That is exactly what I was imagining, actually. <laughs> Isn't that the Imperial City? Um I don't think it is, I don't think it is. No, it just looks similar because it's a ring city like in Cyrodiil. Yeah. But yeah, something along those lines uh, where you've got, you know, inner stuff, the outer stuff. You've got stuff that's all around the edges. You can see the fields in the background there. You can see the tilt fields with those stripes. Mm -hmm. I imagine ours is quite a bit bigger, though, because it's been around longer and people like to stay where it's safe. Yeah. So for something that's mm, potentially medieval... Uh, yeah, fifty thousand people. It's going to be huge and sprawling. They don't build up in the medieval in the medieval age as much. I'd say I'd say that um, now one when it comes to the tech when it comes to the tech level of this place, because because of all the pe all the people coming around, I'd say that at the low at the lowest they're at they're at um, Renaissance Magitech kind of kind of a pr kind of um, tech levels. Okay. Even, if, even that, if some of the other countries are strictly medieval, there's a whole lot there um, because of the because of the mines that are in this place, it can be a whole lot more advanced. Yeah. And uh, and obviously they're going to be making their own advancements with all of the people doing stuff all the time. There's since this is, for all intents and purposes, a giant college town, there's going to be research fellows. There's going to be. Uh, alumni that are there to help expand the curricula. Mm -hmm. This is not some place that stagnates because if it stagnates, it fails. So. But uh, I still don't think they would build quite as far up as, say, modern day does. Probably no. three to four stories at most in in bigger buildings and two stories in most residentials. Mm -hmm. So it's still going to have quite the large sprawl. And it's still going to have the concentric rings of of different sectioning in the city, whether that's you know the residential sections, the industrial sections, the seaport, the wharf, etc., all that fun stuff. Um as a as a, an, an institute, it's self-governed. Um very likely the deans and the headmaster are also basically the head of government along with the mayor of the town, whoever the mayor might be. Because you have to have that civilian element, otherwise you're going to cause a, a huge social schism. It, it very likely has its own social class schism just because that's a natural way humans work. But it's likely lesser than other places. Because again... Everybody there is either adventurers or descendants of adventurers or people looking to become adventurers or, you know, along those lines. And I, I doubt that by this time anybody doesn't have some adventurer blood somewhere in their family. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, my, my grandpappy's cousin! He was the butcher of, of Class 76! Yeah. But... <laughs> Now, give now given that given that, um, I do think I do think that I do think that it would I do think that um the both the both the university and the and the city that surrounds it, um, mm -hmm. would be would be run in the would be run in the manner of a. I I want I'd want to say a constitutional monarchy, but not quite. Obviously, all roads lead to the he the headmaster or headmistress, but below th but below that is a is a um is an advisory board, a, a mm -hmm. council, if you will. Um, it's 
in this case, it'd probably be closer to a technocracy. People at the heads of their particular uh, field of expertise being on a council to make decisions. Yeah, I could, I could certainly see, I could certainly see that. And, and I know technocracy sounds futuristic, but I, I, I boiled it down to what it was. Um, well, it's, it, yeah, it's just people at the peak of their their knowledge, right? Yeah, each one ha is is the the exemplar of their particular field of expertise, um, which is ba like I said, each dean of each class course or dean of each houses and. All of those come together as the council. The headmaster is, of course, like the council chair. And then, of course, uh, the mayor of the actual city is another person there because he represents, or she represents, the people. They represent the citizenry, whereas the others represent the, uh, the, the school themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a very collaborative atmosphere. Yeah. Now, with that with that in mind, now get, getting when it comes when it comes to when it comes to that, I do I do see um, there would be, within the, within the hall within the halls of the place there would probably be a lot of depictions depictions of past events, especially past events regarding the um, paragons. Of course, I mean they're the achievement of their academy is an achievement of the Paragons. So their founders are probably going to have an entire section or chamber, or maybe even a cathedral. Um, what, I was what I was thinking is that along a lot of the halls, you might, you might see art, or st art, whether it be paintings, statues of the like, depicting, um, the depicting these kind of events, or just events within the world. Could be interesting to have um, wall scrolls like detailing uh, great battles that they had. Uh huh. Tapestries, wall scrolls, things of that nature. Yeah. I still think that there should be a chamber, not just for the paragons, but for notable alumni that have done great deeds in service to the Arcanum. Uh, that would be cool. Uh, an archive of like um, uh, statues or something. Yeah, but it, uh, it, its own Hall of Fame, monk. Come on. Yeah. Uh, some places like that is going to have it. <laughs> yeah, that's cer that's certainly going to be there because any um, because and the the achievements of gra of graduates of 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 high of high high standing universities in the in the real world definitely have something like that where they'll be putting, hey this per hey this person went to this school and he did this, um, and they even name some of the new halls or or programs after them too. Yeah. Do you, do you think there might even be a subculture of say um place where they denounce people who became evil perhaps after leaving the academy? Um I think pe I think people who turn evil they just go persona non grata about. Yeah, uh, they, yeah that's a fair they point. strike them. Mhm. Mm and if they get if they get asked in public about it, it's like nope, he never went to this academy, we don't know him. Either that, or if they makes got sense. big enough that they became a threat, the academy takes them out and goes. The academy takes out our own trash. Mm -hmm. Now, the Arcanum will t the the Arcanum will remove the trash. Don't yeah. worry. Now, if one if, now, it would it would be easy to it would, if it does sound like I'm kind of going with the grand with the grand hallways approach with the interior of the academy. That's because I am, but. I'd say each of the houses would t would have their own would have their own spin on that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and that's a good, that's a that's as before we get before we get into that there's I'd like to expand the class list cuz the original idea the the idea that I took this from just used three classes each to to um represent each of the each of the houses. Mm -hmm. I'm think I'm thinking we I'm thinking we expand that and I was going to use the class list that I had for 13th age, but I have way too many um, homebrew classes for that to work. <laughs> <laughs> so in, so instead, I'm going to be using the class list that I have for 4th edition. Okay. Um, I'll start... Now, I'm, go I'm going to... Go 
if it's ar if it's already in there, I'm gonna skip it. But if it if it isn't in there, we'll let we'll add we'll add it in, and we may even add some of the names from the um from the essentials, even though all of the essentials classes were trash. Yeah, we went over that tier list. We're already good there. Mm -hmm. So let me expand this um ta these set of tabs over here, so I have that pre I have that prepped. So wizard skipping. We already have that. Um. Sword Mage. Where would you? Which house would you put that in? So remember, Monk. I I never got to play fourth. This is this is not on, this is not on the mechanics, but on the concept of it. It depends on I would say how, how far they lean in which direction. Like, yeah. are they more martial based or are they more magic based? Do sword mages use more magic or more sword? Is essentially what it is on the yes, concept. exactly. A lot of a lot of times, the depiction of so the depiction of sword mage is someone who uses magic to enhance their sword play. So it sounds like they'd go to the uh, the martial, martial house. Again. Yeah, if they're if they're only using the magic as an as an additive, then their fu their primary focus is still the martial. In which case, martial house. Yeah, um, but I I guarantee that. A sword mage would probably have some classes common with what the arcane house will learn as well, just because it's necessary. Mm -hmm. and it's not like being in one house means you're not gonna, you're not going to at least learn about learn a, if someone who is is sit, is in the martial house is 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 not going to be kept from le kept from learning about magic. Yeah, exactly. It, it makes sense for them there to be a degree of uh, confluence. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Just so they they share knowledge with each other because they know it'll be beneficial to people who are jack of all trades sort of thing. Yep. Or dishes, as the sword mage is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, artificer. Skilled. Oh yeah, for sure, skilled. They make stuff, monk. They're engineers. They yeah, have pretty much. problems. Yes. Um, Bard, we already have that. Sorcerer, we already have that. Warlock, we already have that. Invoker. Um, divine. Yeah. For, yeah. Uh, well, it depends. Are we talking about, like, invoking spirits and stuff like that, or, like, evoking fire? Um, the invoker, in, first, the invoker u usually, usually involves, um, involves, involves, call, involves calling the, involves calling the, um, involves calling divine powers directly. Oh yeah, rather, divine rather than, for getting, sure. rather than getting power from them and using them as spells, but still. Oh, okay, yeah. So definitely the divine house. Mm -hmm. Paladin, we already have that. Cleric, we already have that. Rune priest. I say that still be divine. Divine. Yeah, I mean it's in the name. Yeah, it's literally priest in the name. So yeah, <laughs> kind of hard to argue that one otherwise. Avenger, I also divine, isn't it? Yeah, isn't that the fisticuffs monk with uh, holy magic? No, the uh, I have I have described I have described the Avenger as if the the cleric is the le is the left hand of the gods, the paladin is the right hand of the gods. The Avenger is the underhand of the gods. Ah, so essentially a uh, holy assassin. Yeah, they're they're the ones whose jo whose job is not protecting the faithful, but striking out at the at those who would harm it. Meeting out justice against heretics, essentially. Yeah, Inquisitors would would be under this category. I've jokingly referred to to the Boondock Saints as Avengers. Nice. Wait, uh, that was a joke. <laughs> oh. But I mean, functionally speaking, that is what they are, right? Yep. Um, let's see, fighter, we already have that. Warlord, that's going in martial. Yep. <laughs> Where it should be. Because of course, of course, something like this would have an officer's academy. Yes, absolutely. Um, ranger, we already ha we already have that. Rogue, we already have that. Druid, we already have that. Seeker. The, what is Seeker? 
Seeker was an inter was an interesting idea of a of a of a druidic like a druidic like thing that would um inch that would put would put um spirits within within arrows and put spirits within put um primal spirits within arrows and then fire them arcane archer from dragon's dogma oh uh, <laughs> but if it puts spirits in things if it puts spirits in things monk it, it's it's divine mm -hmm. yeah for sure yeah so i'm putting it it's essentially a conjurer at that point isn't it mm -hmm. um warden which which had the, which was the was the um could be des could be described as as a combat dru as a combat druid. Um, they te they tend to draw they tend to draw upon sp on, upon spirits to def for the for the purposes of defense. They're essentially a dru a what would happen if you made a druid more of a paladin. So it's a druidic tank. It's an interesting concept. Mm -hmm. It's a Torin druid from early WoW. Yes, yes. So I'd say I'd say wardens would be would also be under the divine house. Yeah. Yeah, I can't I can't see why they'd be anywhere else. I mean they definitely learn from other branches, but like yeah. Most most mostly the martial house I'd see them learning from. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're primarily divine. Um shaman also divine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um let's see barbarian, we already have that. Um I am skip. I am skipping the psionic classes because they're because they wouldn't fit. And I'm also skipping the assassin because one, it wouldn't fit, and two, the assassin as having a shadow power source was a dumb idea. Mm-hmm. Um. Let's see. When it comes to. When it comes, I was thinking about some of the uh, the only of the only of the the only one of the um of the of the essentials classes whose fluff I think would I think would make would be would be interesting enough to um con to consider is maybe the Shire, who the whole their whole thing is that they fuck around with genies, but. The more that I think about, it, the more I realize. Wait, that that'd be not too f making a bar making bargains with things. That's not too far removed from warlocks. Mm -hmm. Um. It the the way we have this set up, it does have the appearance that the divine house gets more classes than than and than any of than any of the others. But. The, but it's not like but it's not like the but the classes the classes are ju are just to give an example of what of what they would be what to expect mm -hmm. um and gi given that i don't i i see the i see the personal the personal dorms and co and common areas of the of the four classes as their as their own identities but that but that isn't but that is separate from the rest of the academy. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm think I'm thinking that the marsh the the Marshall House um I keep I keep wanting to call it House Titan. Um. I don't see a reason why not. And when it comes to when it comes to how when it comes to how do you how do you given what we mentioned about the, about the look of the academy, how do you visualize the the uh, how do you visualize what ho what House Titan looks like? Okay, so. This is our martial house. Mm -hmm. This is our house where people learn the nitty gritty of fighting. Mm -hmm. And I but, want something I want to make clear: um, monks, 
are are just as much of a presence in the in House Titan as fighters or barbarians. That's why I said the nitty gritty of fighting, mm -hmm. because fighting means a lot of different things, but it's a it's a very large skill set. Um, so I imagine that in the common areas or and the like such as the common hallways and the common rooms that people will be in you're going to see there's probably going to be some art and and, and tapestries and scrolls of battle mm -hmm. of um breathing forms for certain uh stances mm -hmm. uh there's probably going to be anatomy uh posters even just for people who are all about that crit fishing. Um, you're probably going to see the standard suits of armor type thing. Which are probably ensorcelled for defense, but that's a different thing. Um, the, other thing I, the other thing I think we should make clear with this is that while one might assume that, th that this academy is, go is very um, European fantasy based, that is, n that is not the case because, again... The Paragons have been all over the world, and they've st and they've studied techniques from all over the world, mm -hmm. and that ca and that carries over into the into this place. So while it might so while the architecture might be might might have might have a European bent, things like these suits of armor um, wouldn't. Mm -hmm. They're going to be various from different places. Mm -hmm. You may even see some terracotta soldiers. Yeah. Again, probably in Sorcelled. <laughs> I could I could see I could easily see that the that um the a lot a lot of a lot of these a lot of the training equipment that you would see in, that you would see in a dojo would probably be all over the common area um all over the common areas all over the training areas it would all be well used well loved and well worn yeah um some of the stuff also... that you might see in that you might see in an old in an old school gym you'd probably see in there Mm -hmm. You'd also see some of the um, idle games that you see dexterous warriors that love to play. You'd probably have an axe throwing and knife throwing board because, yep. of course, you'd have an axe throwing and knife throwing board. Um, the, but I, I'd imagine I'd imagine that a good that a big chunk of that a big chunk of the of the one one there's probably one area within the within. Either the common areas or, or the like that is, essentially for essentially for students to um, spar. It's probably one of the training areas, actually. Specifically, uh, you can come here to spar for fun, or if you ask a headmaster, you can settle your differences in the ring. Yeah, because that's going to be big in the martial school. Yeah, and it's it's. Because this place was built by the greatest of the greats with the help of the entire world, everything is ensorcelled. Everything is warded, magically fortified, and they've only been building more as the years go on. Mm -hmm. So these training rooms, there's there's no fucking way any trainee's gonna break it. I um for for whatever reason I have I have this idea when it comes to when it comes to the um when it comes to say some of the spar some of the sparring or just some of the areas where people would would do forms. That oh. it can that it can be ensorcelled to mess or, to mess around with the gravity, a la the a la the gravity training that we that we saw in DBZ so much. Yeah, I was also thinking that there were probably going to be places where you could create automated golems to fight against. Yeah. Oh. Ob obvious, obviously, obviously, making sure to ensure some to ensure some degree of safety. If you're going to use the golems on max setting, you have to have a member of the divine house, uh, the divine house, um, faculty around in case you get your ass kicked. Mm -hmm. And one, or maybe someone from the skilled house to a. Uh, give you some potions be like dude you just got fucking owned yeah oh uh, and i could e i could ease when it comes to and the other thing i could easily see is a is a bit of a library that co that covers 
um, scrolls and books of, di of different fighting styles or tactics or the like. Mm -hmm. um, that place would prop. That place would probably also have a t a table to simulate um, war games. Mm -hmm. There's one other thing that I'm imagining here that I'm not sure we've gotten into. Mm -hmm. There are gonna be gym bros. Oh yeah. There are gonna there are gonna be fitness bros. Mm -hmm. Which means that the kitchen areas and the and the mat and the mess hall areas, an entire section of the library. Is going to be devoted to food, food. not just food, nutrition. Yes, and not just any nutrition. Nutrition from across the world, which means you're going to see wall scrolls that are still promoting things like old Eastern um, medical food. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, which is also goddamn tasty. So, like anyone who's never had Eastern medical medicinal food, um, go watch Shokugeki no Soma first. And and watch uh watch watch <laughs> I shall add it to the list. I gotta watch Black Lagoon and uh Outlaw Star first. Yes. Yes you do. Mm -hmm. Um but Shokugeki no Soma, there's there's one person who cooks entirely using medicinal food because she imagines herself to be the imperial uh physician to her empress. So that that and sounds. I should note that when it whenever we talk about um gym bro gym bros, we are talking about the wholesome gym bros, the guys who will look at anyone, no matter what shape they're in, and go, "You got this! Just a few more reps, and you've hit your goal for today." Mm -hmm. Rather than, "What are you doing in the gym?" Yep. The assholes who ask you why you're in the gym when you're out of shape are the assholes who should get out of the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's. That's not the kind of fellowship you're supposed to have between dudes anyway. Like, that's that's cancerous male behavior. We're meant to push each other toward excellence, not fucking down each other. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I know it's as much as it as much as it seems that um that the that the that house that house titan would be is is male centric. I want to make clear that's not that is that is not the intent. That is not the intent. We have your six packs ab tomboy GFs here. <laughs> trust me. Yes, yes. How we get the we get the muscle boys and the muscle girls. Yeah. And I could easily see that the um he that the headmasters of, of the place are the are the kind of person who would um would. That would ha would find it would find interesting ways to in to um to deal with people unruly. Best case scenario, having that having them if if they're if they're caught stealing from the kitchen, having them um work it off. Three more laps around the outer wall. The outer wall is twenty kilometers. Three more laps. <laughs> um, if anybody remembers the potato incident with a. With Attack on Titan, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Yep. No, the, um... Uh, I also imagine that the Headmasters are going to be varied. Widely varied. Mm -hmm. You're going to have many of the tropes. You're going to have your... Uh, general... <laughs> your, your, your Alex Louis Armstrong. You're going to have your old man who's so good with the sword, nobody ever fucks with him because they always lose. Mm -hmm. You're going <laughs> to... You're gonna have the lady who is the ice queen that melts when you give her her favorite chocolate. Oh man, <laughs> I'm reminded of Rapier Granny from uh, not Rapier. What's the uh the dueling weapon that you use? A uh, fencing foil. That's There's still a... that's still a rapier. What the hell are you talking about? Oh, fencing foils are rapiers. I didn't realize that they're derived from rapiers. Yeah. Oh, okay. The difference essentially between, a training rapier. The different, not qu not quite. The different, the difference between a foil and a rapier in modern fencing is what you're aiming at. With a foil, you're aim you're only doing thrusts and you're aiming for the chest and the torso. With a sit with a saber, which is which has the handguard that everybody's familiar with, um, you're only doing chopping motions and you're aiming for the limbs. Makes sense. Um, With an epe, you can do both, but yeah. that's only in warfare. Yeah, the 
I've only I've only ever done foil and saber. I've never done epee. I've only held an epee in the SCA, but we have a different we have a different episode for that. Oh yeah, well the, the SCA episode will be will be coming one of these days, but today is not that day. Indeed. Oh. But my my point is that not only are the the professors, faculty, headmasters, etc going to be widely as widely varied as the martial forms within their own halls. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> They're all going to be like I'm I am trying I, I don't know if you're trying for this, Mildred, and I don't know if this is what you want, but I want this place to be wholesome. That is we don't... What, that is what I'm going for because Good this, we <laughs> There are so many there, because so many people want want seem to want to do their take their take on fantasy to be to be on the grim end of things, and I for while I'm while I'm not opposed to that concept for something like this for the for something that is supposed to te- something that is supposed to help people learn how to learn how to be proper adventurers so they don't go out and fucking die being whols- being wholesome for that for that foundation is highly important. Yes, we're Please. building an even more wholesome UA. We're not building the Adventures Guild from fucking Goblin Slayer. I, I was just gonna mention Goblin Slayer. I like Goblin yeah. Slayer, but that's not our aim here. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, so do so, I. Man. It's a fantastic uh, comic. My my point here is that the people all support and build each other. And it's not just going to be this house. Every house, and in fact the entire academy, which then, you know, colors the entire culture of their fiefdom, is one of everybody works together to make things better. Mm -hmm. As depressing as the song is, uh, We All Lift Together from Warframe would actually fit here for some portions. Phenomenal song, for the record. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a good chain gang song. Because that's what it is, a chain gang song. It's precisely what it is. <laughs> but uh but the, the the idea behind it that we all all lift together and suffer through what we have to suffer so that we can also strive towards what we have to strive towards is the idea of this place. Mm-hmm. So yes, every member of the faculty is gonna be supportive in their own fashion. You're even going to have, I almost guarantee it, someone who is so versed in uh, medicinal cooking that they're going to be like wow are you a student here no i'm 84 what and they're human mm-hmm. and that's, what? that's the that's the other thing when it comes to the races that would be involved um a lot of these a lot of what would be considered the standard races would still would still be uh, would still be applicable humans uh, humans elves dwarves gnomes um Tief- tieflings. Um, we cut down enough trees that the elves had nowhere else to live. I um, <laughs> I sh- I'd like to I'd like to note something when it comes to when it come when it comes to the way I treat elves in the Project Gaia setting I've been writing um on the side. Mm-hmm. The majority of the majority of elves that are seen in that setting could be considered some tw- some sort of half elf because. Unlike in a lot of settings where half elves are are looked down upon, half elves in Gaia, and I'd probably if I was adapting advent this academy into into Gaia, I would do I would do this as well. Um, a for the longest time be for the longest time a ha, a half having a half elf as part of your family was cons, was considered it was considered a good thing because. When it because before before the elves met humans, they were dying. Out, they were, it was very clear that they were going to be dying out. Like they would be go, they would be gone in a few generations. Mm-hmm. Even with, even with the even with the long li- even with the long life, they the um, they would they would either di- they would either just go it go into complete boredom and that and go into stasis or. The, or that, it, or or just completely wipe, get wiped out. Yeah. And when it was when when it was when it was learned by accident, 
that they are compatible with hu that they're compatible with humans, it's like holy shit, we actually have a way out so that we aren't going to go extinct. <laughs> and while while there's not necessarily such a crisis in whatever world uh, the Agito Arcanum appears in, mm -hmm. um, that that idea of camaraderie again, we all live together is going to cause interspecies interrelations. That's mm -hmm. just... that. I guarantee you there are more horny teens in this castle <laughs> than in any fucking college town. Mm -hmm. And all of them are training for different types of high-stress positions. They're, they're gonna fuck. They're gonna fuck to blow off steam. <laughs> they're gonna make friends. They're gonna make enemies. It's gonna happen. Rivals, yeah. enemies, it all happens. But it's we aren't here to get in, into that in, in to get to that in particular minutiae. Yeah. It, it, it's mammalian behavior. You can't get away from it. Oh. And and reptilian. We have dragonborn then there. Oh, and fair enough. <laughs> Which, as an, as an aside, I've made this clear. I vastly prefer the the way tief, the way tieflings and dragonborn were portrayed in fourth edition than I do in fifth. In fifth, tieflings are just ha are just half fiends. Not a whole, not a whole lot to say about, not a whole lot to say about them, um, and dragonborn are well humanoid dragons. Back in, I've mentioned this in the past, but back in 4e, the idea with tieflings was that they were the descendants of a decadent human empire that made deals with demons, and and the curse of that carried on to their descendants. Oh, there's also, a, if you look at some of the art that was done around that time, there's a very gypsy kind of leaning with the tieflings. Yeah. Whereas the, ro the, ro the, the Romani. Yeah. The dragonborn, on the other hand, were also descendants of, of an empire, but are now ha are now hatched. At, they're, are essentially the men and women out of time. Mm -hmm. They were ha they were hatched from a bunch they were hatched from a bunch of eggs. In oh, in a world in a world that they don't necessarily fit in anymore. Yeah, but I mean, this probably even goes beyond the standard races people think of. I guarantee you, there are half elementals, half celestials, etc., all throughout this academy. Oh yeah, there's going to be tons of, <clears throat> to use a cursed word, diversity, in our in our particular university. And no, it's not ham-fisted here. Nor should it be. No, <laughs> we don't. Do, we don't do that. Oh, that's just something I, don't... I, want, I wanted to. I wanted to get out. I wanted to get out of the out of the um out of the system regard regarding that. And yeah. um, when it comes, I could easily I could easily see that the oh, that the um that the old the old swordsman um instructor that we have in this is. Is is prob it would probably take a few notes from my favorite drill sergeant from S Starship Troopers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, ro okay, rookies. Who's got the guts to try and take me out? Yeah. Um. Or what I was imagining was actually um, old man Hakudo from uh, incarnate reincarnation of, uh, into a slime. Mm -hmm. Cause he's 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 nice and cheerful. Until Gobta pushes his buttons, he's like, "I guess it's time for more training." <laughs> and they're like, "Oh God, no!" <laughs> oh, plus, uh, plus, when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the um the the um un, the unarmed instructor, I could easily I could easily see him I could easily see him um get him dealing dealing with a student that's a bit more unruly and saying. Okay, it's okay. It's time for stretching practice, and everybody in the room was like, "Oh no, not again!" Okay, murder grandpa. <laughs> I know who you're evoking there, monk. Am I wrong? You're not wrong, but then you have to remember that he's got a, a that that uh this male unarmed uh instructor has a female un uh, unarmed teaching assistant, and uh they like her stretching practice even less. <laughs> <laughs> you could also go the the Haposai route too. Oh, Jesus. He he wants you to stretch for entirely different reasons. Nah, not going that route. We'll have a we'll have a pervert like that somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I guarantee. 
Or we probably actually have a pervert like that somewhere in the Marshall School, too. It's it's not unheard of. Yeah, there's multiple ways you could approach it, but... Gen generally speaking, the generally speaking, there's a there's a whole lot of the, there's a whole lot of of the, of of, the, of fact, that within the within the um, <clears throat> within the dorm for House Titan. Yeah, I I, I actually imagine Haposai would be more likely to be in uh, our skill house. Oh, because probably. of his panty thief stuff. Yes, yes. <laughs> um. Speaking of that, let's get to the let's get to the skilled house. Um, the way I the way I see it, it would it would look it would look standard if you don't know what you're looking for. <laughs> I.e., there's pl there's places where you where that require passwords to open. There's se there's um secret doors and hidden chambers all over the place. Yeah, but. Those secret doors, those hidden chambers, all those passwords, they lead you nowhere because those are the obvious bait. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's what's right in front of your eyes that should be what you're considering. Yeah. Just walk up to the receptionist, dumbass. <laughs> uh, but when it com when it comes to when it comes to where the living quarters is, that's one that's one of those things where you'd ha where um where it would it would be it wouldn't be the obvious door. Mm -hmm. um, but I imagine that their their um their layouts, much like the martial classes, are going to have a lot of uh related kitsch around the um around the common areas of of you know the, the wall scrolls and such that are related to their particular skilled like uh, professions. Mm -hmm. There's probably even somewhere written on one of the walls in a, a marker that even the arcane house can't seem to get rid of for some goddamn reason uh, how to best pickpocket somebody <laughs> and the best and the best way says turn over this brick how to best pickpocket somebody turn over this brick <laughs> Which... and well you see what happens if you turn over the brick yeah it is it is. I can. I can most def. I can most definitely see that. But and that leans into that leans into the, into the rogue kind of thing. I do. I um. I do see that the, that some of the some of the common areas might ha might ha we obviously have to have a um. There's going to be a common area full of mad engineers, not um, mad scientists, mad engineers. Mm -hmm. Um. Probably, probably with probably with a probably with a a sign of beware of explosions. No, it it have a one of those signs of days with last uh, last a day without accidents. <laughs> yeah, some somebody's yet, just walking through as they're going through their orientation. Then you hear a, then you hear a loud boom with an elect an electrical clack crackling. Everybody looks in the room, go, oh damn it, not again. And one of the people. One of the people they don't they don't change a placard. They hit a button because one of the engineers made it button operated. They just hit a button and it resets from one to zero again, for like the fourth time that day. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, and when it come, I could I could ease I could easily see a um a mi a miniature a miniature area. F not too not too far removed from the from a from a small orchestra when it comes to um or a small uh, even a small sound stage for for bards and and similar things not ju not just for music but also for performance mhm mm but i mean you're going to have you're going to have tons of tons of different these are going to be a little more eclectic than even marshall was cuz marshall Marshall House as a house mm -hmm. has a focus on while there's a wide wide variety of martial forms and a wide variety of things to do related to martial prowess. Martial prowess is much more narrow than what we lovingly and sometimes annoying uh, uh, frustratingly call the skill monkeys. Mm -hmm. Um so I I imagine the skill house while it while the common pathways and most of the common areas are going to be fairly uniform because you know that's what the the actual dorm staff and such are going to want. There's going to be a lot wider variety of practicum rooms and testing environments and 
as we said, mad scientist room. No, mad engineer, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have performance areas for the bards. You're going to have places for the artificers to make their mad shit. Um, you're you're going to have places for... You're going to have an entire maze of doors for the for the rogues to practice their lockpicking. Who can get out of the maze fastest? <laughs> Barbarian, confused from, Mar- from Marshall House, shows up and just swats all the doors down. I did it! Get out of here! You you weren't invited. Oh jeez! It's gonna happen. You know it's gonna happen. Oh yeah. So, some rogue is gonna have his barbarian friend come and knock down all the doors, and they're gonna look at him and be like, "You cheated!" And he's gonna go, "You never specified the rules." Because that's a fucking rogue. Fucking rules lawyering assholes. But uh, I also imagine that um. The kitchen here is going to be a little less uh, far out <laughs> compared to Mother Marshall. It's probably going to be a pretty normal kitchen. Mm. Except that's where all the culinary students are. Because it's a skill. And so you're going to have a lot of people testing maybe some of their alchemical concoctions. And that's always going to be... You're going to hear from literally everyone else. D- never never eat never, never eat at the skill house. No, just n- no. You don't. You never know what you're gonna get. And you're gonna be like, "Oh, that ain't that bad." And then you're gonna have the worst case of food poisoning you've ever had. But then the next day, it's also going to make you feel better than you've ever felt in your life. Yeah. Do you recall how when we were do when we were doing the he- when we were doing the um, hero course episode, we talked about one we talked about one of the st- one of the um, students. Being very good when it came to when it came to when it came to nutri- when it came to um, herbal medicine and have and having these blends that ev- that everybody was afraid to drink. Mm-hmm. That's what's coming. That's what's coming to mind. It's it's cer- it's certainly going to help. It's certainly going to help cleanse. It's just not going to feel good the first time through. For any of you familiar with Super Robot Wars, we're talking about Kusuha Mizuha, who creates the best health drink ever. But it tastes like crap. You probably will throw up. The only people who like it are Bullet, her boyfriend, sort of, and Vaughn from Gunsword. And if any of you know about the eating habits of Vaughn from Gunsword, you now know what I'm talking about. Not enough sauce. Yes. For those for those unaware, he likes to put as far as what sauce he puts on he puts on his steak. The answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is always yes when it comes to steak. Well, v- um, it's not just not just steak, pancakes, all the sauces, soups, all the sauces, fish, all the sauces, any food he's going to put at least. Ketchup, mustard, Tabasco, relish, steak sauce, and quite a few others on there. Can't forget the mayo. Ah, uh, good times. It, I just... Vaughn is... Vaughn is... Vaughn is Vaughn. We're going to leave it at that. Mm-hmm. We're going to call him Vaughn the Tasteless today. <laughs> one, of the, one, of the, one of the many, 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 many nicknames that he has. Vaughn the Unemployed, Vaughn the Freeloader, Hangover Vaughn, Steel Vaughn, Pretty Boy Vaughn from the Garbage Dump, Vaughn the Devil in the Poisoned Tuxedo, Vaughn of the Dawn. Mm -hmm. But when it but within within that approach, because keep in mind that the classes that I that we leaned for with these skilled houses, things like artificers, rogues, rangers, and bards. Um, I do, th- I do think that, you know how we mentioned that the training a- that the that the training area might might have ensorcelled elements. I think there would be a similar thing with the skilled house to replicate different environments. Yeah, of course. Because well, this is one way you're going to get that parkour training out of your system. When it comes, <laughs> when it, especially when it comes to the trees. 
and uh and and just for you uh einbrecht in a in the council i'm i'm posting a picture of vaughn putting sauces on food oh no you'll notice he has another bottle in his hand and he's pouring from one I'm not familiar with this character, but this is hilarious. It's a mecha anime. Um, you will learn very quickly that uh, not only am I an evangelist for for the monastery, I'm an evangelist for all things mecha. And we are petty motherfuckers who keep roasting Gigak every t every time a mecha work does well. You know, monk, should we call ourselves mechromancers? Bringing no. mech mech mecha back from the dead, even though it isn't. No, 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 because I know exactly where you're going to be leading with this, and we already did the Mechromancer last week. Actually, two days ago, Monk. Yeah. Still, um, side, side, side hustle, Veil of the Void, 10% off. Two monks as your, uh, as your coupon code. <laughs> That's the number two and the word monks. You can download it from their website. Using using that code for ten percent off. Mm -hmm. I had to shill that. I'm sorry. Thank you, Trevor. By the way. <laughs> but um, yes, the skill the skill suite would would likely have ensorcelled elements to help them test their luck or their skill or both. Mm -hmm. I'm sure someone's probably made a gambling den somewhere out of those particular elements. A gambling den that never ever works for anybody but the house. And of course, so nobody goes there anymore. Um, nobody goes there anymore until they do. <laughs> How did I get here? Well, now you have to sit down and gamble a little bit or you're not getting out. You know what? You're on. Yeah. I didn't bring any money, so you're screwed. <laughs> uh, and of course, this is the one place where I'm pretty sure someone would someone would play the um, knife game that we saw in Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Or an old timey, uh, an old timey uh, game of a uh, of just uh, liars dice, mm -hmm. and I could see that everywhere. Bard wins every time. It's but it's not a case of spot who's actually cheating. It's a it's a case of um who of who was able to cheat and still get away with it. Everybody's yep. everybody's cheating. Yep. Just how and who and who catches it. Mm -hmm. But the place is also going to be a place where you'll probably find your best friend. At least one of these people is always going to be by someone's side. Mm -hmm. um, because while it may be a hive of scum and villainy, it's also a hive of loyal bastards. Yeah. As for the name for this place, we, we haven't named this house. Mm -hmm. Hmm. House Hermes. I can I can go with that. I mean, it certainly works. Mer merchants, liars, thieves, uh, uh, health. You know, because because of the Caduceus, um, messengers. <laughs> I mean, and commerce. Can't forget commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, so Hermes kind of fits. Yeah. Uh, that brings me to that brings us to the divine house. Um, it would be easy to say that it that it looks like a that it looks like a cathedral, but I feel that's a little too easy. I don't think it would look like a cathedral. While we do have some of the more puritanistic uh, divine methods such as the clerics. Mm -hmm. You still have the militaristic divine elements, such as the paladins and the avengers. Mm -hmm. And you uh, and you absolutely have the more naturalistic elements, such as the seekers and the druids and the wardens. Mm -hmm. You even have spiritualists, the invoker and such. Mm -hmm. um, I imagine that the common hallways... Much like we had various suits of armor from various places all around, all ensorcelled as real guards um, <clears throat> in the Marshall House. And we had various tricks painted on the walls and also, you know, diagrams of things like uh, traps and 
and mechanisms and so on throughout the common hallways of the House Hermes, House Titan and House Hermes, mm -hmm. I think here you would see multiple pieces of iconography from various religious and spiritual institutions in in harmony. Mm -hmm. um, and not like that stupid cringy coexist symbol. <clears throat> I hate that symbol. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, I knew. <laughs> but you're going to have... There's going to be probably a lot more of a natural element to this place. Many of the common areas are likely going to have an opening to the outdoors. Mm -hmm. Simply because of the numerous ritualistic, spiritualistic, and, and religious people who need to connect with nature. Mm -hmm. But you're also going to have, you know, your little, your little chapels, your your places of worship, your meditation rooms, everything you would need under the sun for the more cloistered individuals. Mm -hmm. um, then again, you're also you're, while they aren't entirely martial, they do have their martial arms, so they're probably going to have unique martial training areas compared to House Titan mm -hmm. because of the... Uh, <sighs> Because of the fact that, you know, you have to either have an, an open area so that you can summon Moonbeam or call lightning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you, or you have to have a special place to take on that holy fucking smite. Mm -hmm. And, and um, they're also likely going to have an R&D department for creating new rituals and new ways to call to the gods and the spirits. Um. Like... What immediately comes to mind when you mention that is um, thaumaturges. Yeah, the tr the the original definition of a thaumaturge, mm -hmm. someone who conducts and researches miracles and wonders, rather than what it's become these days as a as just another word for magic caster. <sighs> but yes. Um, there's likely, due to the divine nature of everybody there, going to be various lightings around, whether you have the bright divinity of, of a light god or a sun god or a strength god, or some of the more murky, morose uh, lights that come from, say, the Raven Queen. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're going to mesh somehow. Yeah. <laughs> the places go... I, I imagine, also, this place... House Titan, you're going to feel the activity. You're going to feel the pump. You're going to feel the vigor. Mm -hmm. Just because there are Jimbros there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's really it. Yeah. Uh, House Hermes, you're going to feel the the whimsy. You're going to feel the jokes. And every, and even if someone pickpockets you, you're getting your stuff back. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. With the uh, Titan House, I'm reminded of Mob Psycho 100 and the, uh, the Jim Bros that try to teach him to not be such a wimp. <laughs> The bo the body improvement club, yes, yeah, I love the body imp improvement club. They are the most wholesome fifteen year olds ever. Yes, they are absolutely wonderful. But uh, I I actually imagine that a lot of the people in one shape or form around here are going to see people as are going to see anyone else as someone to be sheltered, mm -hmm. protected. And welcomed. You're going to feel cozy here, homey, and uh, it's going to it's going to make you just kind of wander inside and lose yourself. Like a random passerby or someone who isn't you know actually training in any of the houses yet might go in and get lost for two hours just looking at the pretty stuff. And then, you know, one of the paladins or acolytes is going to be like, hey, I've never seen you around here. How you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you're new here? What, well, how'd you get here? Oh, you just wandered up from the castle town? Uh, that's no problem. Do you need help getting anywhere? Were you joining the academy today? No, you just accidentally wandered in? Okay, well, can I help you get back to the entrance? I'm sure people are probably worried about you. I don't know how long you've been here. It's probably a common enough occurrence that there are acolytes out on the lookout all day. Yeah. <laughs> And I'd say, you remember how there were petty gods in, say, Exalted? 
yeah or the or the local deities in um in 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 similar works especially 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 when it comes to things like the kami or the or the various local gods in in asian in asian mythologies yes and they'll they'll also be exonerated you'll likely see little shrines everywhere you'll probably see you'll probably see that and you'll probably see you'll probably see certain um sp certain spirits affiliated with them just just wandering just wandering about the place and being not, being not too far removed from the ghosts that would show up in in Harry Potter, they're just a, they're just a part of the thing. Like how um, nearly headless Nick was a was a natural part of the school. Yeah, well, and I also think that uh, because of that, um, there's going to be this is this is going to tie back into how so many people came together to create this place and how it's warded and fortified and again and again layers upon layers this this not just this house but the arcanum itself is going to be seen as the single most um religiously diverse uh whatever you want to call it, whether you want to call it a church or whatever, in all of their world. And the gods are going to favor it. There's there's no way the gods would not favor a place that has so many of their devout learning not only to be devout, but to use their their the divine gifts that they're given to help others. Yeah. In whatever way they may help others. Oh. Again, we, we have just as we have somebody who is a, who is an acolyte of a sun god going around healing people. We have people who are acolytes of the Raven Queen going around killing the undead. Yeah, I um, I would I would say when it comes to a, when it comes to a professor who might, who might be a um avenger of avenger of the Raven Queen. Mm -hmm. Um, the approach the approach I'm kind of thinking of is that she. She's a, she is a very nice person, but but she has certain odd eccentricities that can that um can that can be a bit can give people the wrong idea. That and she that and she has a very strange sense of humor. Yeah, um, I am I imagine that when it comes to a lot of the professors and faculty within this house, uh. Because of how polarizing being a high-level member of any clergy, religion, spiritualistic society, etc. can be, um, they're all going to be much more um, defined compared to, say, the faculty of uh, House Hermes. I imagine House Hermes faculty will try to make themselves appear as normal as much as possible. Which is going to stick out like a sore thumb in House Hermes, mm -hmm. but they, you know, they want to make sure that everybody trusts them because otherwise nobody's going to want to be in that house. <laughs> we have the we we have the variations that we talked about over in House Titan that were caused by the different martial paths everyone was taking, but that the general spirit was we all live together. Mm -hmm. in, in this case, literally again, Jim Bros. Um. Here, the spirit of we all lift together is expressed differently. Much of the faculty is likely going to be very parental, whether it's, or, or at least um, guardian-like. The, the Raven Queen uh, professor you were talking about, likely very much a big sister to many people, even with her weird eccentricities. Yeah. Um, she's def she's definitely somebody who pr who probably in who probably enjoys um probably enjo probably enjoys tell telling spooky stories uh, um ar around certain times of the year if you follow me. Yeah, yeah. She's the and... kind of person who would have the best and the possibly worst um campfire stories. Yeah. And uh, and then I also imagine we have someone who who would be like uh, let's say a um. A, an acolyte of cord uh, as as part of the uh the faculty constantly having liftoffs 
and by lift off I mean a, a weightlifting show off mm-hmm. with the one of the uh, professors who is like I said basically Alex Louis Armstrong mm-hmm. um, <laughs> over in House Titan every every fucking semester every semester they have a lift off and everybody watches it because it's so hilarious probably and they're probably. tied <laughs> they probably they probably fir- they probably first met the same way at the same way Alex communicated with his with Izumi's husband yeah very likely now flex and that flex and then and then mutual agreement Oh. Yep. And and so with the with this particular house a lot of the decoration like the the wall scrolls and stuff that we d- discussed earlier mm-hmm. um as we said iconography but a lot of it's likely just going to be plants. There's we have a ton of different druidic societies. That that can be taken from. There's likely going to be plants all over the place. Mm-hmm. So not only is it going to feel cozy and homey, you're also going to feel like you're still in the forest. How, I thought I was just in the pasture with the cows. How am I in a stone forest? At least it's not a stone ocean. <laughs> that would probably be more uh, more fitting in, in House Titan. <sighs> but uh i imagine the place being also one of the more um one of the more interesting houses to go into as you go on like house hermes is interesting from the get-go so is house titan how, this house is going to seem pretty calm at first, mm-hmm. but then you're going to see things like, why is that person with the Raven Queen talking to that person with the Sun? Oh no, they're creating an anti. They're creating an anti undead grenade. Got it. Mm-hmm. There's an artificer at that table with them. Oh shit! They're creating an anti undead grenade. Anyone can use. Yeah. Oh. And and the more you look, it's gonna be it's gonna be like that picture I send every so often. The more you look, the worse it gets. <laughs> oh, I could I could like although that brings me to the question of what of um there's two there's two arch there's two archetypes I th- I think are worth touching on when it comes to the faculty. One of them is um pa- is we've talked about paladins, but I but where would you envision a pa- a paladin of Bahamut because that was that was a common combination back in the day. I don't know if it that still a, is. That was a common combination back in the day, and these days a paladin of Bahamut is much different from that combination back in the day, Monk. Mm-hmm. Um, when it's expressed, because people tend to go more for the I'm a I'm a paladin for a dragon that is also a god rather than I'm a paladin for a god of dragons. Um. For, I I believe that if we have a Paladin of Bahamut on the faculty, there is no way they are not a Dragonborn. For one, they're prob they're probably a Dragonborn, and they're prop and they're probably they're probably a big guy. <laughs> they're prob- oh yeah, they're probably se- they're probably seven foot tall and ha- and complain about low ceilings as much as you and I do. Yeah, and, but they're also probably that guy that um. Gives everyone a hug, even when he's in full plate, which gets kind of uncomfortable sometimes. Pinches. Um, I don't think the full plate pinches; it's just rough. Mm-hmm. I mean, after all, he's a big guy; he's probably barrel chested too. Yeah. Um, hey, <laughs> but I, I imagine that he's. Um, I, I'm just gonna say it's all might. <laughs> not, I'm not fucking kidding. It's all might. In how wholesome he is, and how much he likes to motivate people. Mm-hmm. He's got the big booming voice. He's got the reassuring presence. He's he- he's friendly with everybody. He wants everybody to have a bright day under the glory of Bahamut, and uh, you know, just go on from there. Mm-hmm. 
everybody's going to look at this seven foot tall lizard man. And anyone who doesn't know him is going to be like, uh, uh, because it's a seven foot tall lizard man in plate mail. Uh, lizards don't really have the same facial features. Dragons don't have the same facial features as, as humans. Mm -hmm. So they can't really tell if he's smiling or not until like this one acolyte uh, pops up and she's like, oh, don't worry about him. He's happy today. He's always happy. <laughs> like, how can you tell? And they point at his eyes and they go, see how he only has one eyelid down. And somebody's going to look and be like, how the hell am I supposed to see that? And they're like, and and she'll be like, "Oh, you'll learn. Don't worry." <laughs> Welk, welcome to the house, by the way. Yep. Um, and when it com when it comes to the one of the key one of the key things is that is that I can easily I can easily see um people with people within the, people within this house being fr being um on a first name basis with some of the spirits that like to live there because of course it's. It would be pr it would be easy it would be easy to envision that um yo that young gods that rep that represent the culture of that house start to show up. Of course, and I also I also guarantee there's probably a spirit that's been there since the the foundation of the place was laid mm -hmm. that goes. I remember when the Excelsis was here. She was so nice, Grandma. Grandma, that was that was four thousand years ago. Oh, well, there was this one time I remember this nice. Look, that's still the Excelsis, Grandma. <laughs> um, oh, a I, spirit so old that all she remembers is she loved the Excelsis. Yeah, and in that same in that same vein, um, do any of do either of you recall um the creation of the O God of Hangovers? No, that doesn't. <laughs> That was that's a that was in um disc that was in Discworld I think I think it was in Hogfather Night. Um, <laughs> which, why is that movie not in the Christmas canon? By the way, it it is. You never hear people talk about Hogfather Night when talking about Christmas movies, and they really should. I mean, you you heard me mentioning it mm -hmm. sometime. Yeah, I watch Hogfather Night. It's great. Mm -hmm. The only the only problem they have with that is that they is is not quite getting knobs right but that but that's hard to do so i, I mean so i can't really i can't really get on their case about it but my like hogfather knight is still the source of one of my favorite quote quotes about from discworld mm -hmm. death then that will be a valuable lesson <laughs> can't give a child a sword what if she hurts herself it's a sword. They're not meant to be safe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but at one at one point, the Wizards Guild asks, "If there's a god of wine, why isn't there a god of hangovers?" And then everybody hears off in the distance, "Oh God!" And thus, yep. the old god of hangovers was born, who essentially feels every hangover that ev that people don't when they get drunk. Yep. And that's that's uh, that's terrible. I love it. Terry Pratchett is was a was a soul too good for this world. Yeah, and Disc Discworld is while it is very much in the realm of fantasy, it is a fantasy with a very Br with a very British humor. If you've ever wet, read any crack fic, just realize that Terry Pratchett wrote it first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. Disc Discworld is his cracked version of fantasy. Remember that it's turtles all the way down. <laughs> But, uh, so, we, I, I imagine that, yes, as new parts of, not just this house, the entire city. Mm -hmm. They're all going to manifest first in this house. But much like I don't think the uh, ghosts are limited in the Harry Potter of in Hogwarts Castle, I don't think the spirits and gods are limited to staying in this house. I'm sure... You could probably go to House Hermes or House Titan and see gods associated with them. I'm sure maybe one day you'll go in to, to lift with your buddies and, you know, there's there's Thor just lifting with you. Mm -hmm. Or or um, or ha or having um, I could I could easily I could easily see Take Mikazuchi um, be, being being some being somebody's spotting buddy. 
<laughs> yeah, or, yeah. Or 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 giving or giving wrestling lessons to somebody because you know he invented sumo. Yep, Takemi Katsuchi. Um, of course, Susanoo would always be asking people to cut down more grass than him. <laughs> oh, I think I think Sus I think he would be a case of we like you, but he's also a dick. Um. I could see, I could see, I could see Sun Wukong being the being the person who, who um is who constantly cheats at 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 everybody's car at everybody's cards in House Hermes. Yeah, but then everybody's wondering why he, how he could be cheating at cards when he's also lifting weights. <laughs> and Wukong answers ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> God damn it. You set it up for me, Monk. You set it up for me. You should have known it was coming. Yeah. But as far as as far as the as far as the name, um, I th hmm. that's that's where th that's where things are going are going to be are going to be a bit um a bit tr a bit tricky. Yeah, that's a really, really tricky one. Um, because, frankly, the place is going to feel, through everything that's there, mm -hmm. that welcoming, homey environment with all the protector guardianship that doesn't feel smothering, but just kind of there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, if, we're, if we're naming things after myth mythological figures, as we've done thus far... Um, it's a very motherly image. Oh, um, I, I'm, th I'm thinking House Gaia. House Gaia could definitely work. That was that was one thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure we should keep everything in Grecian Grecian legend. To be honest. No, I was. Th um. If not, if not, if not, if not Gaia, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of what would be, um, what about Frey? Um, I could see, I could see House, House Frey. I could see House Frey, uh, or... Hmm. Uh, it's it's really hard to make a de decision. We could also say House e e uh, Izanami, but that would be the, the wrong person. Or House Amaterasu, but that's again. I now find, we're putting. I find the even with the, I find I find those would be a little bit too um, wordy. Wait, no. Okay, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What's her name? Was it? Yeah. House Nua, the Chinese mother goddess. I can I can go with that. So, because she uh, like. The creation myth behind Nua is huge. I mean, it shouldn't be surprising considering China. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I think we can go with that. Yeah, and that bring that brings us to the arcane house. Okay. Um. Firstly, uh, as uh, as as weird as this going is going to sound, um, because this arcane house is likely going to be very studious in many ways, um, and is it going probably going to be that one place where the seekers of knowledge are most concentrated? Mm -hmm. House Odin, he sacrificed an eye for knowledge. Come on now, it's kind of he, obvious. He did. He did. He literally. Got rid of his own eye and nailed himself to the world tree for knowledge. Yeah, I can, I can certain, I can certainly, see, I can certainly see that. 
Um, Plus, it gives us, you know, the, the, that nice spread of different cultures across all of our house names. Mm-hmm. And it's not this. And one one might ask if if it's in if it's in this setting, why are we using why are we using Earth name? Why are we using names from Earth from Earth mythologies for the for these house names? It's mainly to, it's mainly to establish a theme. That that much is the case. But it's also to, it's also to account for the fact that that um, a lot of a lot of the stuff that we take inspiration from did that whole taking names from different mythos because because they happen to like it. Well, and then of course there's the there's the third part. Names are meant to be shorthand indicators with immediate identification behind them when you're using them as a title. If we came up with four names of four completely brand new mythological beings that each house was named after based on its on its theme, the names could be anything we wanted, for one. But would that really give you an idea of what that house is about? No. You'd actually have to read the supplementary material to really understand the house. And yeah, you're probably going to do that anyway in the event that this were to ever become some sort of lore book. Mm -hmm. But the name itself, just by reading that name, you get a sudden understanding of there are these four houses. House Titan, House Hermes, House Nua, House Odin. You have a somewhat understanding of what each of those are. And there could be a little blurb after each. House Titan, those uh, those fit for martial prowess. House Hermes, the wheelers and dealers behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> House Nua, they greet you all within the divine radiancies of their gods and spirits. Mm-hmm. And then House Odin, the arcane secrets untold lie before them. Now... It would be very tempting to have it to have it look like a have a look like a wizard's tower on steroids, but I th- I think that the, I think that that's one archetype that doesn't really doesn't really fit here. Because, I think because I think cons- consider oh, go ahead. this um, something that I often have to tell people when I bring them into L five R is that. You cannot look at even though a Shugenja is a spellcaster, you cannot look at them the way that you would look at the spellcasting antics of a wizard or a sorcerer in a more European leaning work. That idea of the isol of the isolated her- hermetic spell hermetic spellcaster locked up in their tower full of books where they stu- where they pour over ancient tomes. That is not what the Shugenja is. It has yeah. far more in common with the with a Taoist priest, a or a, or a geomancer, or a onmyunji. Yes, um, and of course, all of all of these archetypes we're discussing right now are probably going to be or will be expressed. Mm-hmm. There are going to be those hermit-like wizard people who are going to single themselves out to study, mm-hmm. but there are also going to be just as many people working together to study things. Um, I imagine that some of the fixtures are still going to be pretty typical Wizard's Tower, glowing crystals in the flame of, you know, lanterns or whatever, because, uh, first of all, Magitech, and second of all, there's a bunch of arcane ar- arcane individuals here. It's just easier. Um, practicality, as it would be. Pragmatism, even, even further. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also imagine that... Um, the wizards, because they're going to be a lot more focused on the arcane, the secrets of the arcane, you know, all all of this house, you're going to see lots of books and scrolls everywhere. Books and scrolls from different walks of life. There's going to be a lot of... It's going to be a semi-library within itself, for one. That's what I see it as. And it's going to be a library of multiple different types of, of written materials from, you know... Wood pulp paper, papyrus scrolls, etc. All around. Um, you're even going to have things like cuneiform carved in rock. Just because that's what fits the particular magical theme at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you're also going to have pragmatic, but comfortable, furniture. Nobody wants to sit down pouring through written materials and doing experiments in a chair that is uncomfy or on a table that is uncomfy. 
um, again, pra- you're going to have a lot of pragmatism in this place, I think. Things are going to almost look semi-normal. Um, you're likely going to have lots of carpets on the stone floor to keep the echoing down. Um, which also means lots of tapestries. And these tapestries are both going to show uh, illustrations of what magical spells do and look like. Like, this is a meteor storm cast by so-and-so from such-and-such an age. Mm -hmm. But just as likely, you're going to have magical diagrams. You're going to have uh, wall scrolls that show uh, precepts for specific magical schools. All of these along the same lines. It's it's going to be very scholarly, though. There's going to be a lot of study material and a lot of uh, experimental rooms that are more warded than the rest of everywhere else that is warded because, you know, magical explosions. Mm-hmm. Even the artificers don't get rooms this good. <laughs> and... When it comes when it comes to the di- when it comes to the different the different styles of um of magic, I'd I'd I'd, I'd imagine I'd imagine that um I I had th- I had thought about putting something to to be to be a bit to be a bit of a um take that take that at the Vancian model, but that's a little bit that would, that would be pushing things a little bit. Why do we need to take that at anything, though, Monk? We're not discussing the mechanics of a game. We're discussing the lore of a place. Yes. Um, I do. Th- I do think that there would be that there would be certain specialists in, di- in different um st- in different styles of ma- in different styles of magic. Um, Everything from alka history to normal casting. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. Th- I do think that the that the that when it comes when it comes to the, when it comes to the common room, obviously a whole lot of a whole lot of books and scrolls and and the like. Um, a, f- I'd I'd say I'd say that when it comes to the, when it comes to the places that people that people re- that people sleep in or 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 their or their personal rooms, those are not those are not locked with with regular doors. Those are locked with runes. I, I imagine they're going to be locked in whatever magical system that person holds. Mm-hmm. Um, I imagine that out of all of the rooms in in all of the houses, these are going to be the second most personal, with the most personal being House Gaia for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but these are going to have, you know, all their personal research, all the research done in whatever their specialization in their school is, whatever their type of their casting system might be, whether that's uh, alchemy from Full Metal Brother, Al- uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, uh, and before anyone says anything, yes, that's fucking magic. Eat shit. Um, it really is. <laughs> it's magic with very defined. It's very, with very very defined rules, but magic nonetheless. You are. Oh yeah, still, a transmutation circle is not too far removed from a ma- from a magic circle in in other works. Um, or material components in others. Yeah. Yep. I'd say I'd say in I'd say in that in that same in that same vein, um, there'd probably there'd probably be some safety rooms regarding, um, regarding regarding sorcerers, because well, I've always envisioned sorcerers as obviously they're the ones that can they're going to lean into blaster casting the most, but they're also a t- they're also a style of magic that is impossible to be subtle. Not only impossible to be subtle, but also somewhat, in some cases, uncontrollable. Mm-hmm. Um, which is one of the reasons we really like Heavens and Heresies, Sorcerer. Yeah. Uh, yeah I do. Th- there is one anime that I, th- that I think provides an excellent template for House Odin. Mm-hmm. Would you care to get? You know me, so you can probably guess what it, what it, where I'm going at with this. But care, but care to take a swing at it, anyways? Nah, I don't. I don't. I. Don't, I, I. I think. Uh, I don't think that's very fair. Oh, <laughs> the Tower of Fangs. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's a deep cut, monk. <laughs> I'm like the only one who would know that. 
Yeah, the tower, the Tower of Fangs from or from Orphan, especially the way it the way it's been portrayed in the more recent series. Yeah, I, which are you referring to, Sorcerer Stabber Orphan? Yes, yes. Just making sure. Because, but yeah, yeah, the Tower of Fangs is very much like this. Mm-hmm. And in and in particular, having some the 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 eccentricities we've talked about here. Are the kind of eccentricities we definitely saw with um the Childman class? Yeah. Especially some of the stuff that Osley would get it would get up to because well, her nickname was the Chaos Witch. You don't get that by accident. I mean maybe you do, after all chaos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, um the eccentricities and the various particulars of how they're school or study of magic works mm-hmm. the every, every room you go into is going to be personalized a little bit differently even though it's like i said most of these people are very likely very pragmatic mm-hmm. they don't have time to waste on too much uh too much that could be too ostentatious yeah but this is mm-hmm. the one but this is the one place that would ha- whose professors would be most likely to have absent-minded professor syndrome um yeah, I could I could see a couple of absent-minded professors amongst them, especially if they're old, mm-hmm. um, and have practiced a lot of magic. We have our Tella in here. Tella's going to be here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I used to be able to cast Meteor Swarm. Sure thing, Grandpa. I could show you if I could remember how. Um, uh, and I could. E- in that in the, in that in that same in that same vein, I could see I could see certain certain practitioners um, trying to encouraging people to invent new spells with yeah. mixed results. Well, yeah, but the only way that you're going to get in new spells is to invent them. Mm-hmm. Even if you fail, try try again. The steps through the arcane are never fully tread. And in, I think the the when it comes to warlocks, that's where that's where um, teaching it might get might get a little bit tricky, because of the because of the whole thing of warlocks making deals. I think um, I think somebody stu- somebody studying under that focus would pro- would probably probably end up probably end up learning magic as through the lens of a law school student. Yeah, they'd also probably have a lot of overlap with the with uh, school her- with House Hermes mm-hmm. in in many of their other classes. Because they the would, House they Odin would... classes would be pri- would be primary, obviously. Mm-hmm. Because um, warlocks would warlocks would probably end up spending a lot. They would probably spend a fair a fair amount of t- some bits of time with some of the with some of the other um, professors. Beca- but the reason I bring up the law thing is so that they c- so that they could write out. A, the best contract. A, a contract that is go- that is the least likely to screw them over. Yeah, the best contract. Mm-hmm. Um, I also imagine, like, I don't think that House Gaia, or I mean, uh, House Nua, would have been um, led by a spirit or god, but I think House Odin would be more likely to have their headmaster, their dean, or whatever be something that is not actually uh, an ex-adventurer but is something more likely to be a magical being um i was think i was thinking something akin to a living spell a living oh, spell a living spell or um uh, what about a sentient tome of knowledge that's i mean it might be a bit on the nose but um a sentient tome of knowledge is another good one I was also thinking uh, there's this idea in Shentia called an artifact soul mm-hmm. that when it when a divinely forged object gains enough of an ego, it develops a soul kind of like an ego weapon, but completely sentient, very magical, yeah. um, can grow. I'm and is I'm also view- immortal. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm viewing that. I'm viewing that there is a. Um... There is a st- there is a staff that there is a staff within ho- within House Odin a lit a literal a literal wizard staff that ha- that has that kind of thing. It creates a simu- it creates a simulacrum so that it has some sort of humanoid shape, so it's not just floating about. 
<laughs> you just created Ramu! <laughs> you just created Ramu! That's one way to look at it, I suppose. Um, I'm not sure if he'd have. I'm not sure if he'd have as much of a beard, but the 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 point is is that he is that while he's he's uh, he is he is certainly he is certainly high up on the totem pole. He's not the final answer because, well, I think he, I think even he would know that um, that ha having having not having that amount of knowledge of of the last four thousand years can cloud one's perceptions. Yeah, um, I don't think he should be the top of that, or of the of the school, but at least the top of House Odin. Yeah, um, I also think that, like everyone else in House Odin, he is still researching, developing, and creating new magic. Mm -hmm. um, just because he was a forged object that developed a soul and an ego does not mean that's where his growth stopped. That's where his growth started. He is as much a person as anyone else, and no one in the school thinks anything of it. New students are kind of weirded out by it at first. They're like, what? But that's an... Because, you know, most of them are going to be able to detect. That's an artifact soul. That's an artifact spirit. That's, that is not a person. Or that is not what we generally recognize as a person. And... At, at once, somebody's going to be like, no, that's a person. I don't know what you're talking about. But it's an artifact spirit. So, it thinks, it does stuff for itself. It, you know, it, it's going to be, it's it's going to be one of the warlocks. They're going to go down all the, the checklists. It's going to be like the trial of data all over again. You know, what, what's in a man? Mm -hmm. um, except in reverse. In this case, they're going to be like, that's a person. Doesn't matter how that person was made, that's a person. And and the and then the warlock's gonna end it with and the sooner you come to realize that the sooner the the secrets of the arcane become so much bigger, mm -hmm. and that's kind of like a clicking moment for people like oh oh oh, oh no <laughs> just take that moment of realization of oh shit this is a much deeper pool than I thought it was. <laughs> Yeah. But um, I I think House Odin's uh, R and D department because I'm I imagine every house has its own R and D department. But oh yes, House Odin's is the most <laughs> the most the most uh, motivated, if you will, <laughs> um, <laughs> to yes 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 you caught the reference um, to be the guys who are at the forefront of their fields, whatever that field might be, because there's always a new fucking boundary. Mm -hmm. They can't find the limit. There's no limit. Huh, now I have some ideas, but that's different. That is immaterial to this to this particular uh, exercise. Yeah. And I know that I know that there's the that that some that some that some storytellers would do the whole thing of 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 certain limits shouldn't be crossed, but that's not the kind of story that this sort of academy would be would be would be rooted in. Um, as much as that's I, a bit. Oh, go ahead. As much as I hate that, as much as the term is cringeworthy these days, um, Ag Agito Arcanum is far has far more of a progressive leaning well and i don't imagine especially after four thousand plus years of history mm -hmm. that the that house odin would be reckless about it no they're going they're going to very early on educate their students there are boundaries you will encounter them and you may hear outside these walls just that some people will say, well, there are just certain boundaries that shouldn't be crossed. We don't say that here. We say, study the boundary. Prepare for the unknown. Respect the unknown. And then step over the threshold. Basically, instilling in them a sense of responsibility and uh, wariness. Mm -hmm. A healthy respect for the unknown and 
finally, the pragmatism that in that that is among all of House Odin is due to the fact that everybody is cautious. They are the measure twice, cut once crowd. They are the wear the hard hat even if nobody's working crowd. Mm-hmm. They are they are the crowd of okay, we can do that. Just give me a second to set up a few protections. Mm-hmm. And, you know, House Titan going, come on, I just want to pull out my sword now. No, you stop. We got to make sure this is a little safer. <laughs> um, you know how a lot of the gun tubers that we follow will, will do the whole thing of a lead sled and, and, a, and a string when, te- when doing torture tests with firearms? Yeah. How Soden would I think would have I think would have that kind of attitude of okay he, okay we we have the incant we have the incantation set up it's all it's it's in its it's in its safe box everybody move everybody move back move back farther okay that's good all right three all right um and he, you could probably you could probably have a you could probably have a gag of um of some of some people covering their ears and one person. Um, put it, putting his hand, putting his hand right over his junk just in case. <laughs> and okay, three, two, one. Wave, wave the wand. The thing goes off. Um, and any any debris is blocked by is blocked by a shield spell because these because these things have happened before. Yep. It's like okay. <laughs> First, well, it exploded as planned. Now let's, now let's hope that there isn't any residuals. <laughs> we're gonna wait for a little while longer. We're running the we're running the 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 the, the analysis spells, and we're and we're gonna run a counter spell if necessary. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course, much like how uh, the same gun tubers we watch uh, show um, show ba- battery clear, no cartridge in. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever they're in a situation where there are wands and staves just hot, lying around in, in a uh, in a training area, they're gonna go. Okay, so don't worry. There are no charges in these wands. See, <laughs> analysis spell shows that the, the wands are all uncharged. Mm-hmm. It's always with that sense of respect to their craft. Yeah. If it does, I know some people like to romanticize about how you should keep magic mysterious. I don't. Th- I think it's contradictory to have to have that kind of mindset while having a place where people are learning how to do magic. Yeah, in in, in a in an educational setting, and we saw this with again as much as we make fun of it, Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Um, the rules of magic need to be consistent, which is why Harry Potter starts failing because the rules of magic quickly become inconsistent. Um, it's, it's, you have to have a harder magic system than you would in, say, the Lord of the Rings, where magic is actually quite soft. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you can do a lot of, a lot of shit that's never really, um, quantified. Yep, but it's all, it's, it's also never really explained other than only very certain people who tend to be people that were actually just servants of the gods come down to Middle Earth can do magic. Uh, uh, the, what were the, they the, called? The Iluvatar or something like that? Uh, the Maiar and the Valar. Maiar, thank you. That's yeah. been a while. Yeah, the Maiar and the Valar. Um, I haven't read the Silmarillion since junior high school, and I'm nearly 40, so yeah, it's been a while. Well, ne- neither did Amazon. hey <laughs> <laughs> That's 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 a different discussion, Monk. Let's not, let's not say we didn't right now. Uh-huh. Um, but... You need the concrete magic system. It has its rules. You know its rules. And the only time those rules are broken is when it is absolutely either foreshadowed. Like we've said here, they're constantly researching new boundaries into magic. The rules of magic, much like many rules of science in real life, could be completely overturned by a new discovery for all they know. Yeah, precisely. And then, they, and then they have to rewrite everything, and then they have to redo all the books. Of course, they've got magic, so it's going to be faster for them. It's literally the difference between temporarily enchanting your sword with fire and permanently enchanting it with fire. It's just an evolution of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And 
And here is where I'm going to evoke Arthur C. Clarke's third law. Any significantly advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And the corollary, any significantly studied magic is indistinguishable from science. Makes sense. So, for those of you who might be poo-pooing us for saying you're taking all the mystery out of magic, I counter to you with, fuck you. We take the mystery out of everything else in life. Magic would be just another science. After all, we took the mystery out of radioactivity only 80 years ago. <laughs> and I, I, will ad I will admit that, bring, that bringing up that whole mystery about, ma about magic thing, thing is, is me. Taking, taking one of my many, many shots at the grogs. Yes. But not the grog, who is awesome. I mean, I don't mind most grognards, but some of them are a little obnoxious. Oh, we're, we're, we're referencing Grog, the character. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know that. The Legend of Vox Machina. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't know that one at all. <laughs> it's, a, it's a newer series um, released because they reached their Kickstarter goal in like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. But... In the end, uh, House Odin pushes the boundaries on magic, and and their R and D division is basically their entire house. Yeah. And when it and when it comes to when it com when it comes to all four when it comes to all four of these houses, um, I do I do view you know how we you know how we joked about a, about some sort of Hapasai like person who is a bit of a troublemaker. Yeah, I've I view that I view that as the headmaster. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> the man at the head of all four houses in the entire Arcanum is a troll. Okay, I can go with that. Mm -hmm. I can definitely it's, it's go with that. It certainly makes daily operation more interesting. It it's a Terry Pratchett move, and Monk knows it. That's why he's doing it. Yes, I'm it okay is. with that. <laughs> it's a Terry Pratchett move, and Monk knows it. <laughs> but uh, I can go with it with the in a, a, a troll as headmaster. Hell, he could even literally be a half troll. Um, the approach the approach that I the approach that I am th that I am thinking is that he is he is somebody who. Master, who mastered the art, the art of who is a perfect um, shapeshifter. He'd probably, he'd probably even, he'd probably be even be a full on changeling. Oh, so you what you've done then, monk, is you have either made King Oberon or Puck the headmaster of this school. That's a good question. The answer is yes. <laughs> Oh yes, the unseely and seely courts being involved here would make sense. But the the key thing with it is that even though even though he shows up even though he shows up quite a bit, and the only way to really tell he sho when he shows up is that he always wears the same outfit. But it's always an outfit that's t that's tailored for a different appearance. So, and even and even within that, there's plenty of times where he will he will disguise he will disguise himself to keep an eye to keep an eye on. T on teachers, on students, or ju or just for his own just for his own amusement, to the point where there's the running gag that nobody knows what he actually looks like. They know when he shows up, but nobody knows what he actually looks like. I um, I imagine now in my head, one of my favorite disguises of his is going to be a little axolotl in a little suit with a bow tie. <laughs> Oh god, that's terrible. <laughs> it's fantastic. Axolotls are adorable. Yes, they are. Axolotl I mean terrible in a good way. Yeah. But uh when I say master, I'm saying he can shift between forms in the in a second. Oh, he's Volfog. Got it. <laughs> Volfog system changes in, in, the, in the blink of an eye. <laughs> Yes, I use mecha references for everything I thought you people would have understood this by now! <laughs> I see no problem with this. I see yeah. this as an absolute win. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And as far as far as how as far as um if I, if we were to write a a um season story just based on just just going on say the say the first year of of some of someone's time in of someone's time in this kind of a, in this in um Agito Arcanum as we've de- as we've developed it um I do th- as far as as far as wh- as far as what uh, during first off during orientation is where is where someone would be assigned what what house that they're in and it'd probably be orientation based on a um a con- a conversation with several with a few teachers yeah this isn't going to be your sorting hat situation you're not just being sorted willy nilly this or, is or even be- even better remember the idea of the satellite schools yeah, your satellite school could also influence it greatly. Which satellite school did you go to? Was this the satellite school you really wanted to, or was it just what was closest, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Yeah, and all, and also the important question of why do you even, why do you want to be an adventurer? Mm-hmm. I think that our adventurer should be going into the divine house. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. No, I do know why. We talked Goblin Slayer earlier. I'm thinking priestess. Duh. <laughs> yeah, who pri- who priestess? What? Even though goblin, even though goblin slayer is the focus, the um, audience surrogate character was priestess, and she is a fantastic character, and I love her. And if anyone ever tries to hurt her, I will cut off your arms and sew them to your kneecaps, and watch as you try to play a tap dance with your hands. Wait, now, now I'm think now I'm thinking of sword maiden as one as one of the t- as one of the professors in ha- at House Nua. <laughs> I've done it. I've done it, monk. I mean, she's very welcoming, inviting, and, and wholesome. So, I, it fits. Mm-hmm. She's just, you know, blind. But uh, <laughs> if, if I were if I were to use some XP of Sword Maiden, I'd prob I'd probably have it that um, she's she's bl- she's blind when it comes to her physical eyes, but when it comes t- but. She doesn't need, but um, she doesn't need them. She can see through you. She's more. I'd say she's more like a Mira Luca from the Star Wars expanded universe. Okay, yeah, I could see that. But the, I, like I said, I think I think it needs to be a a girl who came from probably much further away than expected. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe one of the kingdoms that isn't too uh too happy with Agito Arcanum. But she came from a satellite school there, and mm-hmm. she's going to be joining a house Nua. Oh. Uh, and, but that, following her through her first year—that's that, what I think. Yeah, I could, I could, I could certainly see that. And I know, I know there would be the temptation to say that she, that she, that she ended up hearing the divine. I'm more, th- I'm more thinking of the idea that th- that um. That there was that there was a handful of spirits that were her that were her friends, and yeah, and, st- and keep and keep sticking around. Yeah, I um, I see her as charmingly naive, mm-hmm. um, with a heart in the right place, if not necessarily an understand understanding on how to get the the right results. And also, my apologies for being so quiet. I'm just trying to uh, get a feel for how this is structured. Oh, that's fine. Jump in whenever you feel like, man. No, no, I just, uh, I, do, I wasn't really sure what to expect. And um, I've got a good idea now. And I, mm-hmm. I appreciate you allowing me to sit in and listen and participate to a small degree. That is what, is what we're here for. Participate to any degree with which you're comfortable. So long as you make the effort, we appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I think that she would likely, and very quickly, due to being charmingly naive and, and adorable, I'm sorry, I'm not going to give up on cute as justice, and if anybody tries to make me again, I'll cut off your arms and attack them to your kneecaps. Mm-hmm. Um, she's very quickly going to get a few people in, in House Nua alone, who are going to probably, like, flock to her and become her friends and she's definitely going to get a big sister character 
might even be our our uh, our Raven Queen professor. Mm-hmm. Um, and that uh, and and the she's never going to get the jokes, but she's always going to laugh at them because she likes her. Mm-hmm. Um, I do, when it comes to like, I do think that that there would be certain friends that she that that um she would end up that she would end up getting within the within the uh, within the within some of the other houses mm-hmm. um i do i do for whatever reason i see i i we did this with we did this with you at with the ua experiment and it's happening again with with um with a representative from house titan um, I keep leaning into Colossus. Mm-hmm. To the ah, good old Piotr Rasputin. Mm-hmm. To the point where, to the point where, um, he is some, he would pro- he's somebody who would probably see her trying to trying to reach for a high up spot, and instead and instead of getting it for her, he he just he'd, lifts he'd, her up. Just just lifts just lifts her up and put and puts her on his shoulders. Yeah. No, I um, definitely see that. Probably, probably, probably a. I, I'm thinking of a. I keep thinking of a dragonborn monk. I can see that. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, Colossus covered in scales. So I mean, like. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, I can. I can see a dragonborn monk just being that guy who's like, "Oh, she needs to get up high. Here you go." Yeah. And. When it, and of course, when it comes to when it comes to the same monk, you know how we we have you and I, Zan, have joked about our problems with low ceilings and exit signs. Mm-hmm. I think he I think he'd have a similar thing, um, much much in the same way that when Luke Gallows was in, was working in Japan, he'd ha- he'd end up hitting his head all the time. Yeah, there's. He's he's gonna be that guy who has to duck down for most of the uh, doors. Mm-hmm. Maybe not the main hallways. The main hallways are gonna be large vaulted ceilings, so he'll be he'll be fine there. Uh, it's when he starts getting into this uh, the branching off areas. Yeah, and people know people know when he comes in because everybody hears a loud bang. Mm-hmm. And you and usually with the whole. Uh, not, not again! Can't you learn to duck? Oh, but I do see when it comes to um, when it comes to a representative from her from Hermes, um, the vibe the vibe that I keep getting is the is essentially the tr- the um trollish th- the trollish thief, the ki- the kind of per- the kind of person who um. One would one would think that he one would think that he'd he'd steal our he'd steal our protagonist's wallet or something like that, but no, but no, it's a ki- no he no he would do reverse stealing and put things in her pockets. Yeah, put the, put some, put some, put a put a put a few bills in her put a few bills in her pocket and say, saying good saying good job my treat. <laughs> and um, he, I can see that our, basically our 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 roguish character. Yeah. And I, and I mean roguish, as in not the the class, but like literally roguish. Um, um our I er- think she... our Errol Flynn wannabe. Yeah, I I would also like to add a second person mm-hmm. from House Hermes. Um, a very hawkish and austere lady who is doing all of the studying about legal law and mercantile. And she counters Mr. Uh, Mr. Thief every so often when she catches him and goes, You know, there's about seven different laws you violated just putting your hand in her pocket. Trying to protect her in her own way. <laughs> and oh. so you get this back and forth between those two, as well as their interactions with our little priestess. Yeah. Oh. And truth be, truth be told, when... I don't know. I don't know why, but when it comes to envisioning this priestess, there is one character who ke- who keeps showing up in the back of my mind as a template to build off of. Lucy Hartfilia. Okay. From Fairy Tale. Mm-hmm. 
especially given how she treats the spirits within the within the keys as as her friends and there's there's the joke that I, I don't recall who said it but her joining fairy tale is akin to a pokemon trainer joining the justice league okay but that's that's who that's who come, that's one instance of what comes to mind um not 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 one for one obviously but as a template to build upon mm. especially especially since um you know when it comes to exploring the gr the greater setup of Agito Arcanum um our priestess would be would be would would be the would be this would be the audience surrogate and yeah i know it would be tempting to go to go with to go with the the same kind of um priestess approach that you saw with um well priestess from goblin slayer i'm actually leaning that she's more of an onmyunji yeah i could i could see her invoking the spirits and through shikigami mm -hmm. through basically her 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 main her main focus is using the is using those paper te those um paper tags mm -hmm. um and the and the the focus of it is that it is ha again having a handful of spirits as fr as her friends or slash familiars mm -hmm. some of them she some of them she gets along with perfectly fine some of them some of them are a little bit more abrasive, still loyal but abrasive. Of course. Um, and when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to a representative from House Odin, um, I do think I do think that going with a going with a a very studious sort a very studious um sorcerer would cer would certainly would certainly work. Oh. Counter. I'm re I'm reminded a bit of the uh, I can't remember if it's his grandfather or father from Ushio and Tor. With the the previous character you were describing. Mm -hmm. Um, counter. It's a very studious and also new uh, person, just as new as as our priestess is, and is another small girl because she needs someone her age and size to relate yeah. to. The approach to that, the approach that I'm, the reason why I went with sorcerer is I wanted to go with the idea that her magic ability is very, very powerful, but the problem is there the um, off switch, or rather, or rather, there's not much of there's not much of a valve, or to put or to put it another way, in reference to um, skating. Imagine somebody who's very who's a very very fast skater, but has difficulty with the braking part. <laughs> You're you're just you're <sighs> Monk, you're just you're just creating our hypersonic wind character with extra steps. <laughs> <laughs> Son well, she wouldn't be too far removed from Sonic Bloom. I know. I know. I'm just saying that yes, the the off switch is hard and uh and she, she's learning to control her power in the same way that uh, that the priestess is learning to control hers. Mm -hmm. Well, she, uh, the priestess has a lot of, I'd say, has has a lot of has a lot of potential to explore it, and and going to a place like this will will help ta will help tap into that. Whereas the sor well the, the sorceress already has a lot of power just ne just needs to be able learn to learn how to control it, it. <laughs> yeah um our priestess doesn't have a problem with control it's ju it's just it's just being able to develop it so they're on they're on separate pa they're on separate but similar paths and mm -hmm. you could you could very easily have the you remember how we had remember how we had the gag that Korra is a nekojita Mm -hmm. um, you could have the idea that um, so that eating certain foods can tr can trigger certain results. Like if she eats a, if she eats a um, 
if she if she eats a chili pepper, then she then she starts breathing fire literally. <laughs> now you're just turning her into Sun Eater. Uh, it's it would still fit. It would still fit though. It would. I don't I don't disagree with any of this. I'm just making the obvious uh asso associations. Yeah. But throughout a and obvious, obviously, obviously, there's other there's other characters and teachers that can be expanded upon. But I think I think with what we have, there's enough of a enough of a format to build around. Mm -hmm. And as far as whether or not I'd write whether or not I'd write this out as a as a set as as a setting book down the road, not yet. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no to the idea. I mean, this would be even really easy to adapt to FF Legend, Monk. I've I've considered that when we get to the point where I'm where I'm writing a GM section. I mean, we could write this as a setting book that you can just use in anything you want. Yeah, that's. And of course, if I end up doing this, I'd probably I'd probably end up trying to set a Kickstarter or or Indiegogo so I could get the amount of money I'd need to get to get some decent artists. Yeah. Setting books need their art. Mm -hmm. Especially especially one that's as evocative as th as this. I'm not saying that we'd need somebody to handle the la the layout of the school. Mhm. Mm but cer but certain art to re to reference the vi the visual style of the of the houses and the classes I yeah. think would be necessary. Yeah. And I mean classes in the traditional sense, not classes as in character classes, obviously. Yeah, we mean their coursework. Mm -hmm. And so, finally, the the big thing here is that uh, the houses seem to take up everything, but that's where you're going to see most interaction. Um, there's obviously going to be courses and common areas outside of the four house areas that are just that they're common areas everybody you has to travel through them to reach other places or hang out or whatever mm -hmm. there are some that are outside some that are inside everything you would see in the normal quad or concourse of, of a college um and then of course obviously you have the town around which we're not going to go into too much detail about like i said residential areas industrial areas wharves etc yeah there's it's not that it's not that we're skipping it over it's it's that it's not as important it, it's more about the concept than about each little piece of minutia, as we said earlier. Mm -hmm. um, but the the students are, are obviously going to be easily identifiable, whether through some sort of badge or uniform, or even just magical rune they're all given. Um, um, do you know? Do you remember? Have you seen? Have you seen the um, uniform design fr from um, Type Zero? Yeah. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards. If I if I were to have somebody design a, a uniform for the school, everybody gets a uniform that's, uh, well, uniform in some way, but still specialized towards their particular specialties as well. Yeah, just the way in the same way that the logo that you that you see has different colors for each of the four, um, there would be there would be, um, diff there would be different there would be different colors or a different colored emblem on the uniform. Mm. That den that denotes what house they're from. Yeah, and of course, like like I said, the uniforms themselves are going to make them easily identifiable out among the town. Mm -hmm. And the reason I bring that up is because, of course, these students are going to go out into the town. That's part of that's part of what the castle city exists for. You can't keep students cooped up a hundred percent of the time, especially adventurers. Uh, they're going to need to adventure as part of as part of There's, their curricula for one. They're, pro they're probably going to be taking the equivalent of field of field trips to places like caves and dungeons and crypts and all the normal places that you go towards to during adventure. Mm -hmm. They may even have some competitions within the school regarding, you know, how much you can do whatever type of work associated with your house, and they may even have. Uh, a a system where, oh hey, there's this sudden quest at the actual adventuring guild, the worldwide adventuring guild that has its own system that we have our own branch of because of obviously we do. Mm -hmm. 
um, that says this country is under, you know, some really big trouble, needs some help. Which of the, you know, most senior students want to step in and do this? We need 10 of you. Yeah. We'll be sending two teachers with you and one dean. Mm-hmm. And consider this extra credit. <laughs> yeah, just, for, just for the just for the sake of just for the sake of reference, I'm going to send this to you guys in Disputation of Geek Watch. This is um, well, this is the every every member of Class Zero and in, in Type Zero you, um, wore the uniform differently, but the, but the basic take take was the way Ace did it. Yeah. Also makes me think of uh, Class Seven from uh, Senator Kaseki. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But yeah, they, they, they're all going to be wearing, you know, a uniform associated with with the Arcanum. Uh, and because they're going to be associated with the Arcanum in that respect, mm-hmm. um, easily identifiable. The town is going to love them. Oh, you're an Arcanum member. All oh, right. My my grandfather was from the Arcanum, or because literally everybody's going to have a, a, some sort of story like that. Mm-hmm. Every and th- this place is going to be probably one of the strongest nation states ever, but it's also the most neutral. It doesn't need any enemies because all it does is go out and adventure, and it takes out its own trash. Mm-hmm. Any trash developed from the Arcanum, they they definitely go and take it out. Yeah. And I'd say I'd say I'd say that much much in the same way that much in the same way that certain schools have um have di- have different attires for different events um I'd say a sim- I'd say a similar thing would ha- would happen with this and another another Final Fantasy uniform example to to utilize would be the uh, would be the outfits from Balam Garden yeah Obviously the the, the outfit- dress. The dress seed uniforms. Yeah. Obviously, 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 that's ju- that's just one that's just one example. But the point, but I bring up um, Type Zero because they had that normal outfit. They had a formal one. They had um, summer and winter variants. Yep. Yeah. Um, if I wanted to bring up one that I've played recently, Scarlet Nexus. Mm-hmm. They're all technically part of a military academy at the same time that's just a military that kills psychic beings that eat human brains. Yeah. Um, and again, they have the whole different uniforms for different seasons and occasions thing. Mm-hmm. But I think I think that I think that about covers the ba- the basis for the, for this particular project and. I can cer- I can certainly say that it would en- that would that it would do a better job at a academy than Strixhaven did. This is one where you could where you probably could run a f- a full twenty level campaign with. Yeah, I mean, there's so many adventures you could do. There's so many things you could do with interdisciplinary uh, conflict stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And of course, the secrets of the academy. Yeah. There's going to be absolute tons of them. Yeah, with a with a long history and the, it being established by the greatest adventurers who ever lived, mm-hmm. and and some even say they may live still. <laughs> oh, but... You know that's a, that that is going to be a rumor in that in that uh, academy in perpetuity. Mm-hmm. But the overall the overall aim is not, is to is to provide. Like we do with our other projects, to provide a template that can be built that can be built upon, and that's exactly what this is. The foundation mm-hmm. and a strong one. Yes. That's why we focused on the broad strokes and made things set. And this is this is literally what we've done with every reconstruction. Mm-hmm. We we establish a strong foundation so that from that point, everything that is built at least has something strong to start from. And if I'm being if I'm being honest, if if someone were to ask me what system that I would use for this, um, if I have to use something D twenty based, I'd probably use Anime Five E. <laughs> I could see it. Um, because it it would get it would give us the least amount of trouble. It would give us the least amount of trouble. Um, I just, wouldn't want to use D twenty, but that's just me. Um. Barring barring that, I could barring that I can always use Be- I can always use Besom Fourth Edition. <laughs> um, 
as far I could I could as far as as far as the games that we've covered, whether whether or not we which ones we'd probably use, um Veil of the Void and Heavens and Heresies are out. <laughs> I know. I like those games, but I'd ha but I'd have to do some hardcore hacking in order to make it work. Yeah. Um especially Heavens and Heresies. As much as we love you, Tanner, and we do, and you know that, especially since we even played a, a one shot. Um there are things you can do and can't do with your system, and this is this is one of those things that would take some finagling. Mm -hmm. But I do think I do think that th that um, Savage Worlds could e Savage Worlds could easily be done with it could be done within it. Um, as far as Powered by the Apocalypse, I'd have I'd have to make a bunch of playbooks myself in order to do it, and I'm not all that interested in that. It's a pain in the ass. It's not that it's not that it's hard to do um, playbooks for Powered by the Apocalypse. In fact, it's really easy. It's just that the amount of playbooks that I'd have to do is it's huge. Excessive. It's a pain in the ass. Like, with, like I said, with most with most PBTA games that have playbooks, they don't they don't go past twelve. Most of them are yeah. going to have around six or eight. Yeah, this would require quite a few more playbooks. Just a pain in the ass. Yeah, <laughs> and as much as much, while I have, while I certainly have my lean, I certainly have my leanings towards masochism at times. I have my limits. Mm -hmm. But with that said, I think that will cover it for this particular episode of Geek Watch. Next week, let let me. S Oh, ne oh, next week it next week it'll be a case to rev up the chain swords. Eh. Hmm. <laughs> or hammer? Oh dear. You'll see, and of and of course, I've got a I've got a handful of interviews I'm going to be doing over the course of the week, as well as um, as well as the contin our continued look at Veil of the Void come, fr come Friday, Friday night. Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday. Yep. Um. Also, as I as I mentioned on the on the monastery Discord, um, one week from Monday, or today, depending on what time zone you are, we will be debuting a new offshoot of Geek Watch called the Parliament of Geeks. Be weeb or be scrub. So. As Yoshi P would say, please look forward to it. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>